Hey everyone, welcome to Dialogue Choices Podcast. We're back. Christmas happened. It's over. At long last, the demon is vanquished and we'll take Dracula's back in his castle. He'll take another year for it to reappear again. And until then, we get, uh, I don't know, depression and COVID. So how, how's everybody doing? I got chocolates. <laughs> like from it's Christmas a, or he, just in general? Do you just have chocolates <laughs> on hand? Well, as he was it... saying before the podcast, he is Portuguese. What is that? Ah, <laughs> uh, so it's just it's it's just like a a, a racial ability. Yes, no, I'm just saying. It's a Keith, Keith, sounding, Keith sounds like he didn't plus get plus five percent. Just plus five chocolate at yeah, all times what is, in your what is, inventory. What is what's the, what's the Portuguese <laughs> racial cooldown? <laughs> <laughs> it's once per day. Okay, it's once per day. Once, once per, per day, day, you just get once plus five chocolate. You get chocolate. I love that. Nice. Worst fucking ability to have in an MMO <laughs> once per day. No, you're never gonna starve. It's, it seems like a pretty good like, ability. It's like good berries, but but like a hand trip or something. A fucking that'd be, I, I would like to have. That would be great. Getting chocolates once per day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we normally have to like go get those ourselves or some shit. Like chumps. Who do you it think could we be are? like a can trip? Yeah. Well, not a can trip because then you could do it whenever you wanted. Do like, you know, are... a level one spell is just conjure chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Are you are you guys embarrassed if you go up to the cashier with a with a with a basket full of just chocolates and chips and just junk? I haven't bought food no. at a grocery store in two in five six years. Whoa! <laughs> okay. I order all my groceries from the Holy internet shit. like a tech bro. <laughs> That is I've never done that very... before. It seems like that if there's anything that I mean, I mean, I, as somebody who's I mean, I've ordered, I've ordered food, which is enough of a mistake, like money wise. But holy shit, groceries seem like they'd have to have such a tax on them. No, nah, well, probably. But um, oh yeah, it probably yeah. it probably adds <laughs> about twenty dollars, thirty dollars on top of mm -hmm. anything else. Now that I think about it, oh shit, what? that's kind of expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should go yeah. to the grocery store. Then wait, again, yeah, wait a second. That seems like way overpriced. What are you? Why are you paying that much? <laughs> well, it's ten dollars for like the delivery window, and then probably what? there's a tip for the driver on so top of that. I'm sorry, you say ten dollars for the delivery window? Yeah, something like that. What the fuck? Why are you? Wait, I'm sorry. Why are you paying? Well, it's like it's like how ordering you, from DoorDash you ordering... or something is like way more expensive. Are you yeah. ordering how much like how much how much groceries are you ordering per order? Like two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. There is no fucking way you're paying for a delivery time. That's fucking criminal. They're charging you for a delivery time when you pay over a hundred dollars for groceries. Yeah, I, I didn't really <laughs> think about this until you made it sound weird, and I'm like, wait a minute, this wait, is actually yeah, kind of I've fucked. literally <laughs> never considered yeah. how much I'm spending on this. Dialogue Whoops. choices saving lives. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm a, it's for me, I'm a piece of shit me, too. Where I, I don't think about like how much I spend on the things that I have to spend money on. So I don't think that much about how much I'm spending on food because I'm like, well, I have to eat one way or another, even if I'm not making the smartest right. choices ever. But then I like sweat over literally any other optional choice. <laughs> well, the other thing is also that if I I use my Amazon card on it. So that's five percent cash back. This is such a boring fucking topic. <laughs> is it? Yes. Yes. This, it is. That's, this is life on the pandemic. Nobody has adventures anymore. They just talk oh about God. their talk processes about for getting their their <laughs> sweet buns. Uh, hey, speaking of boring topics, do you want to give your audience a channel update, uh, Colonel? About the change in upload uh, schedule and stuff. Jeez, what? Wow. <laughs> oh, Speaking was, of boring then, things, I, I want like, to give, about your I channel. Wanted to give him a chance for it last episode, then I just forgot, and I'm not bringing it up I now. See. Oh, because I noticed that his, his upload like, schedule massively changed, and I didn't see a video or like a community tab post about it. I'm like, maybe he could mention that in the podcast. Because I'm lazy. And then, yeah, then, yeah, then wow. you can continue to not expand upon it. <laughs> yeah, basically. I uh, I got a new job recently and I basically stopped uploading four videos a day and I'm now only at one and that's the gist of it really. Um uh, it's uh, I I I mean to go back to it but um yeah that's the that's it's the hard. situation. It's been like that for a couple of months now so yeah. It's not it's they've seen it. They know Keith. <laughs> they know. But they're like what's 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 going on? What's happening? Nothing terrible. 
Just yeah, that's a it's a big yeah. change if your Colonel's not RPGs number one fan, most loyal click every video boy. <laughs> Sorry, he just doesn't love you. That's anymore. me. <laughs> Yay! He doesn't. He's 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 turned on you specifically. This relationship. <laughs> this relationship is soured. He actually is uploading yeah. all of his videos to another channel that he didn't tell you about specifically. <laughs> all, all the other videos are private, just for myself. They're just for me. <laughs> You've lost the ability. <laughs> now these are all unlisted. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unlisted. Good luck. We'll find them on on the um, HTML <laughs> thing. <laughs> I upload exclusively oh, for to Patreon now. You'll only get it via Reddit <laughs> leaks. But the, the thing is, like, I uh, it's kind it's kind of an it's kind of a realization that I came th uh, to. The amount of hate I had for my previous job correlates, or rather. The amount of the amount of aid I have for my any one job that I have at a one time correlates directly to the amount of videos that I publish. So, so now the that more I love my job, you are, the videos. more videos you make, just out of spite. Yeah, I can kind of relate. Think, I had my waterboard job, yeah. and like I had a shocking output of videos during that period, despite the fact that I was like gonna die. <laughs> like I would just <laughs> come home, eat microwave food, record, eat more microwave food for dinner, edit fucking render it overnight upload it in the morning I would, and i would literally come home from work during my lunch break to like set the videos live that it uploaded overnight because back then you couldn't like you literally had to like put them all in one single queue and then just like wait yeah. for them like you couldn't do thumbnails and things like that and, to, and all, all the proper processing and somehow i was making it work and i i probably wasn't working technically but like it's like a thing where like you hate the other thing so much basically that like you basically want something that you just like doing on to some extent i think there's another aspect to it which is related to the, the having a bad job is really toxic for it's just it's really bad for for mental health obviously oh it's or, horrible I say, a bad yeah. I, I say a bad job but i mean <laughs> you know just a, a job that you don't like because there's there's no bad jobs there's there's i mean there's you know, no good jobs people. also that but yeah uh, but um, the thing is, you just convince yourself that, you know, this is life being overworked and and, you know, not necessarily getting the reward that you deserve for the work you put in is how it is. So, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, I'm going to make seven videos a day or ten in case of Keith. I, 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 I was actually there was one time or two that I published seven videos a day for, for a little while. Oh, yeah. And I was like, just just doing it. Yep, just bad choices, and then then you're then everything feels like it's how like long was each video? No, it was just the normal twenty five to thirty minutes. God, you must have you must have been recording a lot to have that much content ready to go every single day. Oh yeah, it's just you know recording every as much as I can. Real at least busy, three or four hours a day. Jeez. What fucks with my brain is when he sometimes says that he like rewatches his streams and edits them, and I'm like, like, I, like, making, oh, I like, do that, yes, like <laughs> making editing decisions, not just like chopping it into episodes. And I'm like, when do oh, you, that's that's the life now. When do you me. do anything like else? <laughs> like, <laughs> ever? Uh, it doesn't take too long. I, I can edit a 25 minute video in, you know, it depends on the on the on what I was doing in the stream. But on average, between twenty and forty minutes, I get I, I make a, a video. I edit the video. I mean, uh, so, not too bad. It just means that I well, you're already, one, you're already making all those videos for a day, so it's so much. Yeah, that's true. No, but not I not this not this time. I think part of the reason why I'm uploading only one video is uh, or one video a day is because I edit them. I am a lot happier with the result though. Because I, you know, it's it's not so much that the the end result is different, but it is. But it's that's not really <laughs> the issue. It's, it's just that I have control over it, and it, it makes it more rewarding. I feel. Yeah. Nightmare though. I would do more editing <laughs> yeah, in my own yeah. videos, but my um, it's really weird. So I I do a a video encoding at like NVNC or something like that. What is that's, it? Yeah, it's like NVIDIA. GPU accelerated. And the problem mm -hmm. is that my um, D and like encoding it is really fast, but de encoding it in the video editing software is really slow. So like even chopping a video, it I don't know what it's doing. It's like probably loading the entire thing into RAM and it takes so long 
to up are you to, using uh, premiere just decode a thing uh, yeah i'm using adobe premiere mm -hmm. i uh i'm using an old version of adobe premiere uh that i was getting on my old job and because i cracked it because i i can't i don't trust adobe updates but so I, in my old job i i was using photoshop and adobe at home from work from home and stuff mm -hmm. um and i i cracked it so i i didn't have to deal with updates and now I'm still using it. Don't tell Adobe. Adobe, I'm good. I'm swear. <laughs> um, and but I did. I did uh, try a later version, and it screwed up everything. It was terrible. Uh, and I think they they like they dropped support for a bunch of uh, encoders and made things different for at least my cur uh, workflow at the time, which was a bad thing. So it might it might be with the version. You might want to try either DaVinci uh, or something different. This is carried over a couple different versions. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a little um, annoying because like even chopping a like a two hour video into episodes, the bare minimum thing to do, like that will take yeah. me twenty minutes. Of yeah, yeah. Just I know that because thing. of it takes like two minutes to decode or like do whatever actions I it would, needs to do. I would recommend you switch to DaVinci. Um, if that's if that's the problem, like those are the kinds of times you're having. I would recommend mm -hmm. switching because uh, I like so the way I have my setup is all of my all my videos that I record are on a NAS drive. Um, yeah. And so what I do is I have uh, for DaVinci, I have it. So I have that like that NAS drive mounted as a network drive and DaVinci just goes in and goes to that. I just have it go to that network folder, pick like, OK, I'm doing Halo Infinite, goes to that Halo Infinite folder. I import all the videos in slap. I can literally just slap it in and i can edit the video immediately i just can't see waveforms so i don't have any Oof. buffering time there's no like i don't have to sit there and oh. like wait when i render like press play or anything instantly i just don't see the waveforms until it finishes processing all of that yeah that usually in Vegas, takes like you can just drag everything in and just start going although i usually am multitasking yeah, nice. so i usually don't actually that's... start editing until it's done importing the only thing that's is I can't make Premier the mistake does. of reflexively it, pressing Control Z or something, because then it's like, yeah. okay, I'll Control Z that right after I finish importing everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. I, uh, uh, I can Vegas do that with stopped Premier. doing things. I can do that with Premiere, it, and it's just the new encoding thing that I've been using. Like, if I use X64 or whatever, like the kind of the legacy approach. It's so mm -hmm. fast. It's just uh, the NVNC that's slow. Huh. It might also have to do with like a, either what's your graphics card? I mean, we're we're doing it's pretty doing underpowered. Uh, and you I was thought this to podcast was boring but... before. <laughs> Jokes on you, tech support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't actually know what my graphics card is. I found it. Uh, I found this one like in a dumpster behind a micro center. Uh, just, it was, it had some mud on it, but I went ahead and just wiped it off and took it home and plugged Are it in real? and, uh, that's... no, none of this is oh. real. <laughs> no, the elves yeah. installed it when why, he wasn't why? looking. <laughs> <laughs> why so Mr. Mokas so? I, because it, otherwise it would be boring. So anyway, oh, okay. so I plugged oh, I it in and, um, uh, well, it's, uh, Unleashed an Eldritch Curse that rolled back my Windows version to Windows 95, but I make it work. <laughs> Burr! <laughs> Nothing more Eldritch no. than older Windows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially 95. 95. <laughs> yeah. I, I do, I do remember that I bought, uh, I bought the new Vegas at one point. Not new Vegas. Uh, and uh, like I just wanted... Found I was having roads. I was having these like frustrating performance problems or something. I'm just like, okay, it's fine. Fuck it. It's I just I'll just finally buy the new Vegas again or something. And uh, the new Vegas was like, I don't remember the exact problems anymore, but I, I just remember tweeting about it at the time because it was like fucking unusable. Like I couldn't even oh. on a basic level do my job. It ran so poorly and everything was so fucked for some reason. Then I went back to the old Vegas that I had been using that was like two or three versions old. And I ended up just like looking at YouTube videos and found a setting I could toggle that just fixed the performance problems I had in the first place uh, that I could have done instead of Vegas. buying the new one that was that was like apparently unusable. I can't entirely Vegas remember what it was, but it was so bad. Toggles for fixing things. Dude. Vegas is so weird. 
Vegas has so many weird nested menus full of 500 billion things and you'll find out about them via a completely random YouTube video that feels like they made it up. <laughs> and then and then and suddenly you're just like, what the fuck? How did that solve my problem? Why was this a thing? Like weird things like you can set Vegas so that it'll always be live or like it'll always be uh, actively uh I don't know how to put it like it's, the it's actively footage. storing and like keeps the footage live or whatever at all times, as opposed to like trying to go into sleep, uh, sort of like a sleep mode style state whenever you click out of it. Oh, so, oh. It, so it just is like devouring your RAM. It's like by by default, yeah. it by default, it just like it like tries to go into the background, basically, uh, like it tries mm -hmm. to stop, like free up resources whenever you're not actively selecting the window. But like. I have so many pieces of media like I have so many random images and I have uh, like this the many many pieces of footage that I'm like incorporating into it all the time and then like like doing the picture in picture of like your like twitch stream rip and stuff like that while also just like multitasking and being like ah oh, next YouTube video please and it's like it would just <laughs> sit there and stall for like 30 seconds sometimes practically like not responding every time i clicked out of the window then back in and then i like i found like a setting because that just like made up. it stop doing that and i'm like oh <laughs> yes wow. it's like I, it's like trust me i have a good computer i don't need any of your weird optimizations i just want you to work all the time <laughs> and there's like been so many yeah. changes like that although i remember like there was like a billion hoops i had to go through in the early years that just like slowly vanished over the years like originally, uh, what is it? Andrew will remember the fucking resampling setting where yeah. we had to. Oh. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> will remember that. Yeah. Oh. It's like if you, if you use, if you the use earlier. that ruins your videos. Yeah. If you use earlier, <laughs> earlier Vegas, you always had resampling turned on by default, which left, left this like ghosty, ghostly after image of the previous frame after every frame and it must be designed to make like real footage look better in some way or it must have some purpose because it exists for some reason but uh it makes gameplay footage look terrible so if you ever see like a weirdly like i see it all the time in other people's youtube videos especially back when it was a de default setting like yeah. i would see it in game grooms videos i would see it in like video essays and reviews and just all mm -hmm. over the place and i'm like haha someone left to, uh, just, uh resampling on <laughs> or like uh, so you've heard of yeah it's a uh, um you know there's 1080p and then the other kind of companion resolution to that is 1080i yeah, and yeah. basically the way that it works is uh, if you have 1080i footage and you leave resampling on, it makes it look okay. And if you have 1080p P footage and you leave resampling on, it makes it look like dog shit. And it's so like, massively it's normal useless footage for like then, modern 1080p, yeah. like 60 frames per second PC game like mm -hmm. footage. Like there's there's no seams to try to like like spackle over. Like you're just making the yeah. video really bad. It was so no, it's, so like it's, every it's single amazing. time it you turns into literal dog shit. Literally, oh, yeah. so it's like it, back when rendering will even smell like it. It's like back when rendering used to take like a long time, and like. Yeah you would you were trying to make your youtube work and make your channel work and you're just trying to get all the shit going and there'd be like random other problems like sometimes the editing software wouldn't fully like like acquire the video or like load it correctly before it started rendering so sometimes the first five minutes of the video might just be black with audio because it just rendered oh, yeah. without the video because it wasn't loaded yes. correctly but but rendered oh, anyway oh god and then you'd go you'd go through all these hoops to finally get your long render done to get a video going and then after all that you'd be like i fucking left resampling on i gotta do it again <laughs> uh and it's like it was so like i, I remember i used to I, every time i rendered my videos before I, I uploaded them i had to click through them all over the place to see if they were to make sure they weren't like randomly black for a while and that was just like part of the whole ordeal and because you couldn't there was no setting i kept searching and kept looking it up online there was no setting in vegas to change resampling as a default setting you just had to when you finished importing everything sh uh, shift click the entire video track right click on it and then click to disable resampling manually for every clip collectively and just remember that as part of your routine that was just part of how thing do and i used to not have a daisy it's, chain yeah. of like audio edit into my vegas directly so i mean every time i finished editing i finished recording for the day i had to manually edit uh my the game audio and the uh my voice audio in audacity via like a series of things i'd memorized at that point every single day for every single clip 
And that was when I had a job. And I was like, why was I doing this to myself? And yeah, like you used to you used to not be able to batch uh, render, so you had to render every video individually. And you used to uh, what is it? Mm -hmm. uh, there used to no be there used to be no GPU acceleration, so rendering was astonishingly time consuming. Whereas nowadays, your graphics card can render the video be using rendering the videos, which is a fucking exponential increase in efficiency. Like my job is so much easier on the technical be... level than ever before, even though I know more about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, back in like mm -hmm. early 2010s, rendering a 15 minute video took like 45 minutes. It was you so know, bad. For an average CPU, it was so bad. Yeah, it's. I, I, I only started rendering my. Like, I, I basically recorded and uploaded straight from OBS because it took so long. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because, no, like, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah. There like, are, I made it work. I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out for a long time. We had we had our first collaboration uh, when we played Viking Squad <laughs> with you and Bumpy McSquigum, we'll and, and I go. was well. It's just it's just memorable because I was the only person course, that yeah. that would in a multiplayer session just like record the whole thing and just like go. But uh, you guys mm -hmm. like every twenty minutes in sync with each other, you guys would both cut your recordings and then start then start recording again and then do a new intro because you knew you were like you were like live cutting over and over again, and it's like. Well, this yeah. is an experience. <laughs> I don't remember what I did. I, I don't tried remember. to do that too, but like I could never make it work in multiplayer. Oh yeah, no, it's not, yeah, you it's need, not you, great. I do remember that, that you. I do. I do remember every now and then you, there, that was a running gag though, was that you would cut your recording and then be like, "All right, this video is called the bullshit you just said out loud." <laughs> then you type that into yeah. whatever bot you had, and that would become the <laughs> name of the YouTube video as it like auto rendered and uploaded or whatever. So you had like yeah. a, a thing down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of do the same. I still do that same, or I do that uh, practice now where I don't really edit. Like, editing is in quotes, as in I just slap it into uh, DaVinci to export it into uh, into a format that is uh, palpable for yeah. uh, YouTube to accept. But, like, yeah, I just pretty much, I pretty much press record on OBS and then just do it for a set amount of time and then be done with it. I don't have to edit my audio. I don't have to edit the game audio. Like all of that gets done in oh, OBS as I'm playing. The uh, dream. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't I don't want to. I don't want to. I have no interest in wasting like four hours of my life listening yep. to myself, who I fucking hate, go through and play a game that I know I'm doing wrong because as I'm watching, I'm like, wow, look at how fucking bad I am. And it's like That's I don't want to do that. Beauty, I don't. Though. I don't. That's someone else's. Oh, yeah, enjoyment no. not mine i used to, i used to like, wonder like how, how do editing mistakes happen in video essays like surely they would notice the part where they said this line twice for some reason and so on and then i started editing video essays and i'm like oh i hate listening it's not any different from let's plays i hate listening to myself so i'm literally yeah. doing like the bare minimum as far as like exposing myself to it which is that i'm like i'm sitting through all the takes and i take the one i like and then i delete the other stuff and I, I like i edit the entire video essay from front to back like linearly and never go back <laughs> that there is no <laughs> there is no like proof watching like run because i can't bring myself to sit through myself talking for like an hour even if it's a thing i worked really hard on and like I, so at most i'll like i might put it on patreon as a test thing just to, before it goes live to everybody because i can't i also can't bring myself to be like you friend i would like to burden you with listening to myself rant about thing unbidden <laughs> Watch me watch this video. You know make better sure than to no ask mistakes. me to do that anyway. I would watch yeah, the first like, five minutes and like, then be like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. Or like Stephanie <laughs> or whoever. It's like it'd be like, I don't want to inflict that on somebody. Like they can watch they can watch it if they want to when it's out, but like it's such a thing to be like just to burden somebody with your video essay. <laughs> I imagine this is like and, and this is you know why editors and stuff exist uh, for bigger channels is because like when you have like, you know, when you have something like a H bomber guy's three hour video about something, I can't imagine like I can't imagine he just sits there and watches yeah. the same video every day for three I, hours and goes like, I do that. OK, Editors today, burn out why wouldn't too. he do that? Oh, sure. Like, I imagine I imagine that situation. You would I'm cut kidding, up I'm a kidding. video and you would say like 20 minutes to you, 20 minutes to, you, you know, like you don't want oh, yeah. One person hitting a whole three hour video, you would want like multiple editors hitting multiple sections of a video. So that way it just because, you know, it's not about I do um, wonder, I think he edits his own videos, but the uh, 
I know, I, I know for a fact he he does it in chunks, which is part of where I got the idea too. Was the uh, like the first forty five minutes of his Deus Ex Human Revolution essay are on his Patreon right now, actually, and of what I've seen it a few times already, and uh, that's where I got the idea. I'm like, oh shit, because like what I learned from doing the Annihilation video is it doesn't matter like how beefy your computer is once you're like it's like I thought that. I thought your video, your like your editor's performance was like based on like how much stuff was imported into it. No, it's like the number of like actions at some point. Like you take mm -hmm. one 90 minute video and you keep chopping it up like the movie clip, like it's my, like the movie source. I mean, you keep chopping it up like crazy all over the place. And there's just so many individual yeah. clips of the same thing all over your track. And at some point, your software just stops functioning at some point mm -hmm. and you start it starts taking so long to get anything uh, done. So what I what I do is I render I, I, like every eight minutes or so I render the video out. Uh, and then I just oh, like, be, and then I literally just you start over. Together. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I stitch them all together in the end. It also lets me upload each chunk individually to YouTube on a burner account, which lets me oh, tell whether nice. they get blocked, and I'll know which eight minutes are getting like I'll have it, I'll have it round, rounded down a bit. Because a horrible thing about YouTube right now that I've learned the hard way because of the fucking Resident Evil video is that uh, YouTube will just like block your entire video based on one random little clip out of nowhere. And it also will stop checking. So mm -hmm. if yes, you then fix that terrible. problem, it then goes back to checking and finds another thing it didn't tell you about before that you now get to deal with. And you just slowly lose your mind <laughs> uploading the same thing over and over again. So I learned the hard way that you really want to chop it up into a whole bunch of videos because then at least you have some idea of how, like, at least you can, like, find more things that will block the video faster. <laughs> but it's just an actual headache. The, the, Re the Resident Evil video became a better video, actually, because I kept having to edit gags into it to cover up all of the copyright uh, blocks that were happening. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the worst like 48 hours <laughs> of just like That's i just i just wanted to be done i thought it was over and it's not that's that's got to be some commentary there where the video becomes better because of bad capitalism yeah that's the struggle it's because i probably like there's de there's definitely a part of me that i have to curb that is willing to just be like this took forever and I just I'm ready for it to be done. And so I'm going to like put it out earlier than it probably should be like, uh, like, what is it? Uh, like I, I rushed to record the annihilation video. Uh, it's like today I'm doing it today. And it was literally like I had three hours until we were all meeting up for something in multiplayer. So I had a hard mm. time limit and I struggled to set up like a camera rig and like tried to set up purple lighting and like uh and like try to set it up so it was recording in front of me while having a a uh a, a, a what do you call it a teleprompter app on my phone which i downloaded that moment like i had no, no, so little pre-planning and i had a shitty camera and i just read all the lines off of the teleprompter like right there on the spot and that that is like the audio i used in the final video uh despite the what it turned out the video turned out part of that turned out to be like unusable but you i would just like go and like I try to fix that. I'm like, OK, I should appear on camera because I need to have like stuff to show during the parts where there's just not enough relevant clips to use. And like showing clips forever makes the video take forever to uh, edit and so on. And it's like any like at some point you're just showing random clips just to try to fill time. So I'm like, OK, for the Monster Hunter video, what I'll do is I'll print out my entire script and I'll try to just like memorize <laughs> each chunk of it one by one. And then I'll like like do like a kind of ad libbed version of that live. Like I like I'll be like it'll be like it's natural. Oh, people that's are, people, so difficult. Though. People were saying I wasn't. That's natural. what people end up doing. Yeah, that's like what MGM will do. That's what Thought Slime will do. That's what Technology yeah. Connections does. It's oh, really no, that's difficult. Thought Slime though. definitely yeah. reads from a script. Uh, he, he, really? uh, yeah, Thought oh. Slime oh, reads yeah, from a, a teleprompter. teleprompter. Yeah, they, they've got like. Well, what a, I mean is like the 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 pattern of like you you have to just do it like yeah. almost line by line but i had like I had so this difficult thing, but i had this thing where i was like i'm, I'm gonna be more natural by like you know because i'm like a let's player and stuff I, i'll just have like a i'll do like a version of what the script says but i'll do it like towards the camera with like while i'm not reading and that'll be like better or whatever <laughs> i, I, oh compl I completely you. froze and couldn't get anything out like i just sat there for half an hour trying to start and couldn't do anything and so i ended up ordering a teleprompter online like a proper teleprompter that has like a cool like 
polarized mirror or whatever the fuck that lets like your camera your phone reflect towards you but then the camera films through the mirror and none of the script shows up on the mm-hmm. camera but you're looking straight <laughs> at the camera because that's where the script is and that's great i had no idea how cool yeah. that stuff was and since it was taking yeah. a while to arrive i went back and edited the fucking monster hunter script and removed a thousand words <laughs> Like the re- the new draft was so much shorter. Uh, like I both like fixed up a bunch of parts and rewrote a bunch of parts and ultimately like reduced its length by a thousand. And it's like, so that video is usually a really good sign. Yeah, like that video is just better because I was forced not to put out the thing when I wanted it to. And like the the Resident Evil video, it's like I just it took a while to edit. And I'm like, this is just supposed to be a silly side thing. Like I can't, I can't it's it's fine. Like this is the funny clips, right? That's all I needed. And then it's like all those blockages led to me making funnier things happen just to get the video to go live and uh so the video is better I've, but then god I, i've never heard a video <laughs> essay god, yeah. say um oh this video was supposed to take a small amount of time and it did <laughs> it's, I, I, it it's did. always it did, it did bird my Zelda no. video, my special project of like, I will, I will write and edit and record and render and upload a video in one day. That was the entire premise. And I did it. Wow. Oh, good job. Granted, I I had, that it, it was like a pre-baked <laughs> rant that I'd already had in my head, though. So it was like it wrote itself and then I could just go. Still, and also it was uh... over gameplay footage, so I didn't have to worry about all the fucking copyright shit. <laughs> Video games you are, think are that, literally easier Nintendo. to review, <laughs> Nintendo, which is probably why H Bomber got most of H Bomber guys' videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I keep noticing things. There's like there's trends you can recognize where it's like, oh, okay, H Bomber guy likes to do like on screen gags and show up in person, and then mysteriously, the moment he does Pathologic or Deus Ex or Fall- Fallout or other Fallout and so on. He's not on camera a single time the entire video. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, because you can just let gameplay footage run and you don't have to, like, fill the gaps where there's not a relevant clip with, like, your face the way that you'd have to mm. desperately try to do when you're talking about, like, what the fuck do I put on the ca- on the screen when I'm talking about flat earthers? Yeah, like, I've, uh... I've seen I've seen his Fallout New Vegas video, like, twice or three times now. And uh, every time I watch it, I try to get more... I try to like look more beyond just the con. Like I already know what he's saying, so it's more about right. just like seeing the video at this point. Like, how is it structured? How is it formatted? Uh, why is it's it the way it is? And isn't like, it? yeah, and like, there's a lot of like clips where you're like, what are you? What is going on here? Like, what is the point of this? Like, what? Why? Why would you have chosen this this clip in particular to be showing at this particular time? And a lot of it is just like, it's a video game. What, what does it matter? You know, like you're yeah. in the world, you're you, doing a you thing. You hit a point like, where you can genuinely it's... tell which parts is a relevant clip and which parts of them just like filling space because they've been editing for 72 hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's like, yeah, mind. there's like, there's, there's like a point where he's just punching somebody and it has no relevant context to what's being said or like, it's not even in the same area of like yeah. the tone that, or like of the context he's talking about. It's just like, it's content of his character punching somebody for just no reason and it's like oh okay sure it doesn't matter it doesn't ruin the flow of the video it doesn't (laughs) cause any kind of problems it's just funny when you Mm -hmm. like stop for a moment and go like wait why are you punching that guy what what is video essay isn't something like how casadors are a metaphor for communism it's just he was killing (laughs) casadors yeah it just yeah he wasn't like making any grand (laughs) statement it's just he was just killing somebody and you're like oh uh, all right are Casadors a metaphor for communism? No. I'll never tell. No. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this video and find out. <laughs> yeah. I've watched it many times, but not like Andrew does. Andrew Apparently not does. that much. God, scripts I, blow like crazy, I too. I will challenge you. I will. Cha- YouTube doesn't keep track, does it? I'm often like... Keep track of what? I, I How many times like, you watched a movie? A video, yeah. I don't know. How many of these thousands of views are mine? 3,000. I keep thinking like why well, I don't even have watch like, one of those that. succinct writing mm-hmm. styles. <laughs> so sorry, Keith, uh, I didn't. I just keep thinking like why can't, why can't I have one of those like succinct writing styles? Like why did I? Because you have to work for it. Why did I have to come out like, and being like Lady Night the Brave, where it's just like a fucking like we're gonna talk in exhausting detail for two hours about this thing, including a summary and everything? Like, ah! well, I I think you're. Brevity is I a think skill. you're also. Yeah, I think it you're also true, like yeah. really in the. 
infancy of your channel to the point where mm -hmm. like you haven't even uh oh, you, you know it's it, like Keith. you've you've just picked up the brush and started painting you haven't really yeah. even gotten to the point where you can definitively put it you know like someone could walk by and say like oh yes that's the i know that i that reminds me of keith ballad like but there's also not the part of you that player. wants to talk about everything <laughs> well sure but you know at the same on the, time on the like, ground and also there's the part like where you like, you'll see like these like people that make like 10 minute video essays on some channels and i usually don't even subscribe to them because like it feels like they vaguely gesture at what the thing kind of is, but it's mostly just mm -hmm. like repeating the general critical consensus in relatively unspecific mm -hmm. terms. And they're not really getting at anything. And I didn't leave like mm -hmm. any like I didn't really like leave with any insight on the thing necessarily. And it feels like they can be like astonishingly shallow by comparison, almost like you just have to just go and you just have to go like it's like. Like it's a, uh, it's hard to give well, short answers yeah. that are complete answers in many cases. Mm -hmm. Right, it is hard. I uh, yeah, I, I have the same problem yeah. with with that sort of video. It's because the thing is, I also understand it from a from you know what YouTube incentivizes, and it just feels a lot of it because like, that's the, yeah the the thing about you want to talk about everything, Keith, but you do know that it is better to you know separate one long video into two semi-long videos and talk about two things because what youtube likes is people to watch a long video essay and then they can the up next here's another long video essay from Keith Ballard. <laughs> it's the uh, yeah. uh what sophie from mars versus uh uh shit what's his name fuck the guy that makes the really long know. video essays and he doesn't use thumbnails no. i probably know who you're talking Critical. about but uh jesus christ he made a seven Not hour him. video that on might, the Resident Evil no, franchise. The <laughs> oh, Jesus, I'm blank. I'm Chicago. completely, I don't I'm completely blanking. Yeah, I don't know either. There was the, uh, I can look it up right now, maybe. There was a random part of me playing Resident Evil 5 with Bird where he was, uh, he, he was playing in the background. And I, it took me like a minute to notice because it was quietly his, one of his videos was just playing in the background during the recording. And I'm like, oh, hang on. I got to turn this off. So this somehow started playing somehow. But uh, like, what is it like? Like uh, Sophie from Mars will like divide one mega essay into a series of like individual topics and make like a trilogy of videos about like The Witcher or Resident Evil, whereas this other guy will do mm -hmm. like, here's my fucking seven hour video on the entire Resident Evil franchise. Let's -a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I prefer I like Quentin it that reviews. Way. Yeah, he's he's a lot better than Quentin reviews. But the thing is, YouTube really will financially reward you if you do the little one hour and a half par parts instead of the seven hour yeah. part. It's, or the, I, or I the know, least I, I previously liked some of the Quentin Reviews stuff, but like the, the fucking like mega videos he started doing. Like I watched, I started watching the Fred one and I'm like, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. And then he Same. kept uploading even longer videos that about others, about similarly like things not my childhood that seemed like irritating Disney TV shows that I would never want to hear about. And then that's just been his channel for the last year is what videos I don't want to click on that are intimidatingly long. Oof. Ricky. No, no. Noah Caldwell no. Gervais. There we go. I, I was like, I'm like, I'm close. That's the seven hour dude. It's not the right part yeah, of the of, name as it turns out. All of Noah Caldwell Gervais's videos are great. And he actually uses that time. Uh, He's he's really interesting. He is the, he is like the, God, what a, I, I hope. I mean, he has like the definitive video on uh, Kentucky Route Zero. Like it was like built for him. <laughs> the game was made for him to talk about specifically. When your video is longer than the game. Yeah, but it's a yeah. It, it's a it's an interesting market. It's really interesting going into the videos and just actually processing why videos are the way they are when you get to that point. I love I love that weirdness. And it's something that nobody will ever know unless they do it themselves. I don't think they necessarily question it though. I uh, I get the I I've been thinking about uh, I've been watching sh uh, videos about Sherlock, oh. including the one from uh -huh. um, H Bomber guy. Uh, and I've been thinking about specifically my initial reaction to that particular TV series and like things that I noticed but didn't make opinions on. For example, in Sherlock, there's uh, one specific episode. It's the the episode of uh, where they, that a, a boomerang did it. 
and <laughs> I noticed that it was it was bollocks. I noticed it, this is this doesn't make any sense. But I remember also like sort of shrugging shrugging it off, uh, shrugging Shru- shrugging Shru- yes shrugging, shrugging it off and, and being like, yeah, well, let's there's more stuff happening on camera right now because you know the TV is it's, it's showing showing more things. So let's get right past them finding the murder scene in a dream sequence. That yeah, sure, whatever. I did, I did like it. it I can't say I'm not saying that it. I enjoyed the the that particular episode or the series in general. Uh, despite no, you know, despite noticing bad things about it, I I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have if it didn't have the bad things. But the thing is, it didn't stick to my mind in in a way that. I could then action, like, action is not the word, but that I could then act on, I suppose, and just write something or make an opinion on. Just, I didn't mm. see that that scene and be like, that is really dumb because of this thing. But I, obviously the reason for that is because I'm not a movie cur- or a TV critic, so I don't have that sort of part of my brain. It's, it's also the kind of thing that comes from paying close attention to something and repeatedly exposing yourself to thinking about it and, like, mm-hmm. like rewatching it, but then, like, you sit there and, like, process it for, like weeks in some cases <laughs> and then you're like yeah. hang the fuck on and like oh that's what that's what's fucking going like my uh like i i started talking about monster hunter basically as a joke because i was like okay all of the scripts i've started they blowed out into all these different directions and then they get into structural problems where i'm like i think i need to restructure this entire thing and then write it based on that structure on that outline and then it'll make sense where it's all going and all that but then also this or that one is like, this one's stressful because it co- touches on issues that matter. And this one's stressful for those reasons and blah, blah, blah. And this one's like a whole show. And do I am I ready for a whole show yet? So it's like, fuck it. I'll just, hmm. I, I've, I've been thinking about Monster Hunter here and there. It's a dumb movie. And every, and every now and then I think about another reason why it's dumb. It'd be funny just to like crack out just a really quick video on that. <laughs> and then suddenly it, like it became my longest video so far and so on. But like over the process of rewatching the, the movie, taking notes, and then also in some cases having things that you think are a certain way and then you realize you're actually wrong like your memory warped the movie in certain ways and then like warp and then going back and forth on that stuff then like looking up stuff about the movie and finding out things that are happening in the background or controversy stuff and so on so like it, it, it's like it becomes an ever evolving story where you keep finding more things to talk about and so it just kind of changes things like it's cuz you're forcing yourself to look at the individual parts and think about them like mm-hmm. the first time i watched monster hunter I was like, it's like, I, I like Mila Jovovich and I like this. I, I kind of like the scene where she's like, where she like gets hurt and she like has to like be like, I'm a hardcore person and I'm going to like do a cool survivalist thing to fix my wound or whatever. But then I rewatched the movie over and over again and actually I'm talking about it and I'm like, hang on a minute. One, the movie fails to have an establishing shot that even ex- that even like successfully shows that she's wounded in the first place. So this scene comes out of nowhere and you're like, why does she need to do this gritty thing to survive? And then you see this, the, uh, the details of how the scene works out and you're like, okay. Um, one, she was limping in what way does like sealing a, a wound closed with gunpowder make her stop limping when limping is more of like a structural thing like she can't support the weight but then she immediately gets back up and just is walking around for the rest of the movie like nothing happened because she exploded some gunpowder on like a, a on like a on like a wound and that somehow fixed her wound for the rest of the movie but then you go to the next layer deep and you're like wait a minute this is a movie where everyone's thrown around like dragon ball z characters and this is the only scene where somebody is like wounded in a way that really needs to be treated in a specific way maybe two scenes but like throughout this movie all these all the shit happens to people that completely unfazes them and they specifically like go to greater details to show like bigger hits happen and those ones aren't followed by being treated in some big like tense gritty screaming sort of way but this one where they failed to even show how she got hurt is suddenly this big this big deal and so suddenly you're thinking about the resident evil franchise and you're like hang on there was this weird part in the in resident evil apocalypse where like she fucking escapes (laughs) a rocket and then suddenly all of her like all of her fingers are snapped in different directions and she has to like like relocate her hand like together and it's like this uh, it's a similar like fucked up scene that the same director made with the same actress where randomly she has to do like the like a saw type moment to like fix herself up and be battle ready again and once again it happens like once in a movie full of situations that should call for that but don't lead to that and suddenly you're like oh i got a whole bunch to talk about like this is fucking this thousand words let's go (laughs) (laughs) like you just 
like it's it's the type of thing that just doesn't land like like i like andrew might remember that i talked to him about in the garage in his garage about sherlock where it went from like a recommendation to like a weird tepid like i don't know like more of it's out but i don't know if i'm like feeling anything like i'm not sure how to feel about the show at some point like it was like slowly slowly i was numbing to it because it has such a strong opening episode and then over the course of the seasons it's like harder to justify it but you're like not entirely sure why you're like i don't know the show doesn't like hit like i'm not getting like an emotional reaction to it but it seems well made and impressive and there's like a dissonance to the That's fact that the it, thing, yeah. it looks like it's clearly a made well made show so it must cuz it looks like it's filmed and edited and so on well then it, that must mean that it's mm-hmm. like written well and has good characters and stories right and you kind of like that dissonance takes a while to like process and then eventually something so bad as season four comes out and you suddenly can't look away from how bad it is and also now it like you re you're re-realizing how the whole show was up to that point and that's kind of what happened to that show and it has not resurfaced it's been like four years oh yeah it's yeah that's a uh, that's keep... like literally it's literally it's a... a description of how like darling the franks happened it was like yeah. <laughs> watching it watching it live was such an impressive feat because it's just people like parroting how great it is and good it is and like you see this like hill that eventually everyone we- reaches where it's like oh the, it can't sustain itself yeah. being bad any longer and so now everyone can see it's bad and so everyone's going back and going oh no it's never oh no it's never been good i've been wrong the whole time you're oh like, no oh <laughs> lord it varies but for some, there, there are some people where for us we were the, were the season four of sherlock of zero escape <laughs> <laughs> where they got through all of the fran- they got through the whole franchise and he was like yeah it's great and there's all this hype around it and it seems like it's good and all those mind-blowing twists those they were probably justified right and then like they watch us go through them when they have to like grapple with like hang on a minute is this whole thing really <laughs> stupid <laughs> and, like it wasn't until they they saw us and are like you know a mix of good points and bad points because we're doing it live and all that but like yeah some of the stuff there's there's some people that look at some of that stuff and they can't shrug it off anymore and they're like hang on a minute is this like sherlock bad <laughs> was it has this whole thing has my has my faith in this franchise been a house of cards that is easily blown blown over and there it goes <laughs> i think zero escape uh, i think sherlock at the very least has some level of uh technical competency <laughs> uh zero escape has that girl smiling throughout the whole game like there's <laughs> No, it is not Sherlock bad. It is worse. I'm sorry. They Zero Escape the is worse entire than game in an HD remake and still didn't fix the fact that the character who faces the most trauma in the entire game is continually smiling in every scene, no matter what, because of a bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Sherlock is better than Zero Escape. Yeah, sometimes I mean, it's like, oh, they left that bug in for the speedrunners, but like, there's no excuse for this shit. It's no like, <laughs> yeah, Clover's smiling no. through all these traumatic scenes because she's bugged out in the fucking like HD remake. And it's like, we're, we're going to put this on PS4. We're going to put it on PC. We're going to put it on every fucking platform, but we're not going to fix that. Clover is smiling for the speedrunners. I think I think it, it works, though, because it gives you uh, it, it eases the tension when you're in a da- like in a scary scene. Or something dramatic's happening. Yeah. Like, man, this is really this is awful. Thing you... And then you like, <laughs> yeah, and you look over and you're like, thank God that Clover's a constant. She's always smiling. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at her she's like the rock that holds everyone together. <laughs> I yeah, it's weird. Uh, uh, but I like it to, is true, though. I like to think like, it was there forever. Like that's just how the game was made. With this yeah, intention. they they just didn't even see it. They were just like, yeah, yeah. yeah there's that character smiling. Let's not say anything <laughs> about that. <laughs> It is true though that they're creating a uh, any work of fiction that is so high off its own farts that it conveys a sense of self-importance is half of the job. Sometimes it's just you know it's easy to be fooled when a show. I say fooled. I don't mean to like. It's not the viewer's fault or the player's fault in any way. If you like something because it made itself seem good, then yeah. you liked it. It's it's legitimate. It doesn't mean that it's good, but it it's not, it, you know, yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to berate um, Sherlock, Lo- uh, Sherlock Lovers, that doesn't sound right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the, the point is, the point is that there's a lot of shows the that super just hoolockers. pretend, as long as they can pretend good enough that they're good, uh, it comes across as good. And yeah, There's also like a really I'm specific Mo- arc that happens that. where 
a story tells the kind of story where like it seems well made, but it's also consistently pushing the payoff further into the future. So it's constantly promising to do cool, and interesting things. Uh, and like, what's going to mm-hmm. happen there? What does that mean? And like, oh, like lost. Yeah, the lost does that. Yeah, Sherlock, Sherlock does that. Zero Escape does that so much to the point Doctor where the, the end of the trilogy is still a tease of what is, is to come next. And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ, just finish a story. But like if but like it, it but when you when you're constantly dealing with that Game of Thrones type situation where it's like what's gonna happen? Wow, look at all this foreshadowing. It's really easy to get caught up in the perpetual hype cycle over the course of years and years and years and just continually believe that that the thing is good and it's going to be good forever. And it's definitely not just like wasting your time and preparing to just like fucking just trip and drop all of its plot lines all at once uh which mm-hmm. uh the Game of Thrones sh- show did for kind of its own reasons and like uh was it and star wars did and zero escape definitely does and sherlock massively does like it just like oh it's it's i think it's just fascinating how a thing can be entirely cliffhangers for future events like people the people who are falling for it with zero escape are falling for it the the same way that that sherlock fans did where every fucking plot line it gets to end on a high note because it's just hyping up what's going to happen next and doesn't actually resolve anything every game Uh, the thing, uh, like, I personally have a very high tolerance, or not tolerance, resistance to that sort of stuff, because I built it. I saw mm-hmm. the second season of Lost, and I was like, oh, so this is how TV shows are made. <laughs> and then I, anytime somebody's like, ooh, what's going to happen next? Don't no care. No plan and lies. You Plus, had if your you grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I don't like, you, I, I don't you like had Dragon quite Ball a Z. tolerance for <laughs> Yeah. I, um, I, I Oh, wow, did. another arc ever. where a guy with three forms challenges the world to a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. did grow up watching Dragon Ball Hold Z, on. but I, I prefer the Sometimes he only Goku. challenges Goku to a tournament. <laughs> what a storyline. <laughs> Most of the but time... They gotta it's send so, it's... out the scrubs, they gotta send out Vegeta, yeah. they gotta send out fucking Krillin. Most of the you time, know, it's everyone Krillin. else going like, "No, we don't need to. We don't need to ask Jesus to fight. We can do it." And then they all lose. And then Goku Wait, shows Jesus up and is like, "Wait, character? what's going on in here?" And then he just beats the enemy. And everyone's like, "Oh, I guess we'll never <laughs> be as good as Goku." <laughs> like Dang, it's yeah. every it's fight, it's just it's huh? No, Goku it, is Jesus. That's Goku's oh, just right. Jesus. Yeah. You can't kill him. Yes. You can't stop him. You can't like do anything. Like you can literally, literally rise once Jesus again. Jesus is from famous the dead. for being. Yeah, he's Jesus he's risen three times killed. from the dead. <laughs> like that's against the rules. Possible. I mean, yeah. that's well, no, because one time was with the Namekian Dragon Ball, the other time was with the Earth Dragon Ball, and the third time. Oh like, my god. It's that's... so unnecessarily arbitrary. Also the, it's always it's... the thing where a franchise always has rules until the protagonist crosses them, and then the rule is gonna have to get out of the way. It was <laughs> on you. Because right, the rules. Namekian Dragon Balls, <laughs> like they can be reused or something, but the Earth ones yeah. can't. Because it was oh, like, yeah, oh, Doctor there. Who totally had thirteen regenerations only, and it's a time limit. Oh man, and we're coming up. Oh, Matt Smith's going to be the last Doctor because we revealed the War Doctor, which means that the twelfth, the he's actually the thirteenth form. Oh fuck, the math's all weird now. Oh uh, well, the to the power of one episode, that's gone now, <laughs> and also. <laughs> he was hundreds of other people before the first doctor and a lot of them were women and people of color wow we retconned inclusivity into the franchise <laughs> in the most jk i, I think way. that's the He's actually that's is. the important <laughs> factor is that uh all of the women and people of color characters were not interesting enough to get their own seasons <laughs> that's the lesson that we need to learn here from doctor who is that those aren't important characters. Only would... the white British males. <laughs> like... On one hand, I was disappointed that in the peak of the transphobia controversy, uh, there was an episode of Doctor Who that opens with uh, the Doctor reading a Doctor Who, uh, a Harry Potter book. But in hindsight, mm. it's really funny because they went on because they, they were retconning they were retconning inclusivity into their show without actually going through the effort of doing the inclusivity. It's like, oh wow, you learned from the best, huh? <laughs> I mean, that's where he was learning. Yeah, yeah. that's he reading, he the reading world of Dumbledore time. is gay, supposedly. But you know, maybe <laughs> the, this bluff I, might get called when we make the uh, the a movie featuring Dumbledore and the exact person that he's supposed to be gay with. So I don't, oh, they're, they're I don't actually know. I don't actually know the full plot of Harry Potter because I've never sat down and wasted my time reading it or watching it. Um, I was fired. 
and so it's not shots fired. And so uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I've, I've actually recently been doing that because my, my girlfriend has like a thing where she loves Harry Potter or she loves watching it during the holidays. And so I've had to sit there and watch all these Harry Potter movies. And I get that they're made for children. So I go in <laughs> it with the impression Young that they're... That they're no, no, don't it's don't children. lie. <laughs> they're made for children. And it's these true. novels that, have to be made... They have to work in certain ways and so that it doesn't uh, make it less interesting for children. But like... Harry Potter is such a bad series from start to finish. It's kind of impressive that people bought more than one book. Like every mm -hmm. fucking time it gets worse because they add new, like the world building only cripples the story every time. Where like, there, I forget which movie was it? I think How it was like you? the fourth. There's like the oh, fourth movie the movies, where the right. entire fucking movie could have been solved if someone just went into fucking Dumbledore's office and used the fucking device he has there all the time on his fucking wall. Like, it just, that's it. The whole movie is people like, Harry Potter's lying. This thing isn't real. It's like, go, go, go to the fucking device that tells you your memories. And it's not trickable. You can't lie in the machine because we proved that it, just fucking use it. And it's like, no, we have to just <laughs> say that he's a liar. And it's like, okay, <laughs> fine. I'll just fucking sit here for two hours and let you do that. And then the end of the movie is all the people, all of the people that thought he was a liar seeing in live action that he's a liar because the bad guy's like doing a weird dance over his corpse. And it's like, what the fuck is this story? Please. Like. He's just sitting there and he's like, hey, hey, fuck you, Harry Potter, and then just vanishes. And everybody's like, oh, he was telling the truth. <laughs> and it's like, what? I'm, tr I'm trying so here? hard to think of which one he's talking about, and I can't tell. I have, I have no, no clue. It's, because we, I think after we, book three, <laughs> I have no idea what happened at any point in Harry Potter. It's, it's whatever. It's I, the, story, it's the story he's talking about is like, I, I cannot identify it. And I know all of the stories. I don't know what it's, he's talking about. I'm trying. I don't want to spoil it, but it's like the one where uh, it's, you want to spoil it. it's the one it's like the, the Triwizard thing, Cup, right? Whichever. I don't know. Which one's the Triwizard Cup? Four. Oh, yeah. The, uh, it's so the Goblet five. of Fire. So it's the, yeah, Goblet four. of uh, is, is that Goblet? I don't know. Goblet whatever. of Fire what, the is one four. that comes. The one that comes after that, where everyone's like, yeah, this, what you said happened to that Triwizard thing didn't happen to Harry Potter. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is a magic world. Can't you? Oh, you have one, a fucking the one, potion. The one where you... all the fascists are ignoring him. Yes. They don't, they don't want to believe yeah, that, the, that yeah. Voldemort's back. And also exactly. the, the nightmare and, villain is introduced. Just the worst woman. <laughs> and it's like, it's every step of the way, it's awful. Because you're like, okay, well, one... She li like she literally asks Snape, who is my favorite character, because he's such a fucking loser. Alan Rickman um, is so great. He's every every time he shows up, it's always just he's either being unnecessarily cruel to children. He is yeah. just being the most <laughs> no, he's disappointing so, he's so human. I've never like, thought of that. He's just oh, like, no, <laughs> he's, about, he's so <laughs> above and beyond awful. It's incredible. You're like, oh fuck, so this is like some Matilda shit. <laughs> it's great and like the one time where i was like okay man this is kind of like he's actually taking pleasure in like being mean to harry like he sits him in oh, a yeah. chair and he's like actually just in, like forcing himself into his mind and like ruining his happy memories of his parents or whatever <laughs> he's like oh it's my it's my parents like feeling nostalgic potter and he's like behind <laughs> his parents in a mirror and i was like jesus what are you doing God. this kid has dead parents fuck dude, off dude, dude, dude. <laughs> in, <laughs> in snape's defense he did want to fuck harry's mom but that's not but it's even better defense. <laughs> no, what but it's this? even better what do you because think it goes defense like, means. <laughs> you do get that it makes it worse. It's worse. Right? But it's better because then it like it, you know it pops all out and Harry's like, I don't want to do this no more. I think you're just bullying me. And he's like, he's like, you're you're weak, Harry. You can't do anything. He's like, all right. And so he just does the spell back to Snape, who apparently also can't stop mind control. <laughs> <laughs> and he like watches Whoa, Snape's really? memories and it's just Harry's dad pulling his pants off with magic. I don't see the problem. I see, this is a flawless scene. And just, <laughs> this is looks, literally like the best thing at, in the entire franchise is that scene. <laughs> just that fucking just fight. Harry Potter, he's like, Get out of my office, brother. <laughs> I remember all this now. Yeah. Oh my god.
You lie. Oh my god, you this is so don't good. Don't know what happens after the third one. That's the fifth one. <laughs> I said I don't know when stuff happens. You bundle of lies. He was asking uh, which book it was. And you know, I, ordered, I, I ordered the Phoenix honestly, was my favorite after, growing up. Uh, oh my honestly, God. after four, like five five and beyond or one book in my mind. It just but, becomes mush. <laughs> but a good point here is that that fascist lady was like, Harry Potter, you're lying. And so she asks Snape to go get fucking whatever it's called, like Beetlejuice bullshit. <laughs> like some kind of dragon come from the office and pour it down his mouth and make him oh, like it, it, it I forces don't him this to line. It, and it forces him to tell the truth like they do it to the fucking handicap old man who I guess was just Doctor Who all along but they like yeah. they yeah, the, the <laughs> part where the, like, fucking David like, Tennant shows like, up and he keeps licking stuff yeah, yeah he's like licking his lips all the time which is a weird which is a weird tick to have it's, when you're trying yes. to pretend to be someone else I was like could you just keep your tongue in your mouth for like three seconds like he like keeps making it. like what are you doing stop yeah, no, they, they totally made him do a weird snake tongue thing for some reason yeah but uh, he does it. He literally does it to his dad, who's the only person who knows he has the tick, and would be like, "Wait a second, that's my son." Like he's the only one who would know, and he does it directly to his face. Like he just wants to get caught for some reason. It's the weirdest. I, again, this has to be written for children, because who the fuck would act that stupid? But it's <laughs> fine. The uh, like it's. <laughs> It's, but they have this secret sauce that can make you tell the truth. And at no fucking point does a council of 28 fucking incredibly old people sitting in a room that looks poorly maintained just decide, they're like, bring out the dragon come and make him tell the truth. <laughs> like, they don't do that. They're just, like, taking it on the word of some old this man in a shitty so hat. Like, like, what is the point? What is the fucking point of your entire stupid society if you can't even use the tools in it? Like, at all. What's the point? Bring out the it's, dragon come. <laughs> it's so weird. And then, like... Somebody show up with buckets. <laughs> and all... Okay. And so, all of this, all this entire movie, this entire movie could not, ha could not have happened if you had just used this, like, seven different magic devices that force people to tell you the honest truth. I mean, and we're instead, talking about a franchise that made the mistake of introducing time travel in the third story. I, I'm, a, I'm aware. But that's... So... Again, there's it's it, it it keeps getting worse is the problem. Like you have this time travel thing. And you're like, wow, this is really bad. You kind of like, I can't believe there's seven movies. How did you fuck up already? And then it gets worse. And you're like, wait a second. Now you just don't have an excuse at all. Like you just wanted to add something cool to the third movie. Now you're just lazy. Like you just are willfully ignoring the world so that you can have a plot exist. And it's not like the way that, well, if no bad things happen, then a story can't happen. This is literally like willful ignorance of the world you live in. Like, there's no, yeah, you, again, need, like, like she literally tools, asks for this fucking serum. And at no point does she fucking ask him to just be honest about Voldemort. Like, at any point, she could have just been like, you know, Harry, instead of making you write on your own hand with a quill, I could just ask you uh, under a potion if you're lying and you would be not <laughs> lying to me, I guess. Like, no, it, it would be make more sense to just enact fascism in a magic world. Well, I mean, that's okay, fine. So the, the, I mean, the, the, the rant is funny, but she works for Voldemort. That's why... That's why she's I, not well, yeah. proving well, it. No, Doug, Keith, everyone who goes <laughs> to the literally... fucking dark arts wizardry is a fucking... God, what a fucking <laughs> dumb department. Like, it's a honeypot. It's literally a fucking yeah. honeypot department. It fucking... Every ep, every movie, it's like, all right, students, welcome back from summer vacation. We have a new person in the dark arts. I swear this one's not working for Voldemort. It's this person. And then the end of the movie is like, I was working for Voldemort. Why the fuck do I hire people for the dark arts? Like, it's such a weird... Like, why are you hey, here? Hey, the what is second this second and third people were not working for Voldemort. I can't remember all of them in a row, but the second one was just an asshole fraud uh, that was just lying his way into the job and didn't know what he was doing. And the third one is Lupin, the most precious character in the entire franchise. And he's and he does, he does not deserve this kind of slander. No slander I, shall be had on Lupin. But he's also a dangerous werewolf, so he should not have yes, been working with children. Okay, some slander. Some slander. Every, every person good, who fills this position 
every person who fills this position does not need to be here. And I'm kind of under the I like at this point, like movie five has told me, shown me explicitly that literally at no point will these children be successful in fighting Voldemort. Like <laughs> never. It will never happen. The only way that this works is because there's one guy who's strong enough to deal with it. But these fucking kids are dead in the water. They will never succeed in life. They are just just a whole bunch of pillars that Harry can stand on to be tall enough to face Voldemort. Like they are worthless. So there's, so there's, there's been a there's been like a collapsing of uh, of people's uh, like belief in J.K. Rowling as an author. Like even before the recent oh, controversy stuff, so bad. Or, or, and like, <laughs> yeah. In, in all honesty, like I do still enjoy the original seven books and their movies. Like I have a good time with them, and they're not like egregious. But they except were for written a handful, by Hatsune, Hatsune Hiko. Except, except there's a handful of like <laughs> distressing. Yeah. Uh, inclusions like cho chang's name and the entire concept of goblins uh like there's oh some my stuff God, there's some stuff where you're like amazing. okay man maybe don't but it's like i don't know i'm used to watching star trek and star trek's full of all sorts of like wow that's a choice you made huh <laughs> uh there's some real iffy choices throughout all of star trek that you have kind of touched you're like well another ghost rape scene huh that's a nope oof. i don't i do not try, try have, I have no i have <laughs> I have no childhood obligation to let anything pass by. I will, I will <laughs> yeah, burn I know. it all down. I know. Have to. <laughs> but, but it does, it does lead to a bit of a, a one noteness when you have the same reaction to every piece of media that isn't the three anime you like. Stop but, making it bad. It's but, not uh, my fault. I, what, I'm what not, happened I'm is not there the was one, one making ghost rape. What happened is like like it, uh, season four of Sherlock essentially happened in the form of the crimes of Grindelwald, which was. Like I bought it as a, I bought the screenplay because I read because after I watched uh, uh, Fantastic Beasts, I bought the screenplay and read it and so on. And it just kind of like it helps like cement the story and so on. And you kind of have fun with it because she has like a, a sort of like page turner friendly kind of writing that's like enjoyable to read. But Crimes of Grindelwald, I bought the hardcover screenplay before the movie came out. And then I never saw the movie because the script was so fucking awful that I could not get through it. I'm like, this is we're gonna be hearing things in a few weeks when this movie's out and everyone is seeing it. I'm like, here fucking. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, I but, saw uh, that in theaters and I felt bad because I was like, wait, I I swear yeah. I watched this movie, but I don't remember anything of this. Oh movie. yeah, because movie where almost nothing <laughs> happens, but stuff, but <laughs> scenes keep happening in rapid fire. But no, the, the canary in the coal mine before that was uh the cursed child the screen the the the, the stage play <laughs> that which like you couldn't hear anything about it for a long time all you heard about was there was a black actress playing hermione and that was for some reason a thing worth talking about even though like stage stage plays constantly like gender and race swap all the characters because that's just part of the yeah, culture of how that works but you know they just the anti sjw the youtubers had the, you know their fucking there was blood in the water that week like the roy's isn't like we're gonna use this because that's what we do and then wait it's for the sjw's that, dang it, it, it harry it, potter's like, gone now <sighs> when, when not white men it's always like this is this must be a, a, a plot <laughs> when we and we're gonna we're gonna out it for <laughs> our very depressingly uh manipulatable audience but no that movie or that that uh, that's because I, I, I have the I have the I have the script because I've been I didn't I've never seen a I have not seen a play since I was a kid I and mean, I don't even know how you would see that one, but it was uh, so Ticketmaster fucking awful because of all the mistakes to make she brings back the time turner from the third book, and it becomes this oh, whole thing where yeah. the plot of Cursed Child is that they regret the death of Cedric Diggory in the fourth book slash movie at the end of the Triwizard Tournament when Voldemort kills him. So okay. it's like this thing where it's like, I I hate it's like, ah, you Albus serious Potter child of Harry Potter. I hate your family because your family let my son die and we blame you still. Uh, so uh -huh. fucking serious Albus or Albus serious Potter, whichever one he's named after, because he's named after both of them. And I don't know what order they're in because it's too many first names. Uh, he fucking like steals the time turner. And uh, together with like Malfoy's son, who's like a little nerd, and uh, and they they time travel back in time to try to save uh, 
to try to save the life of uh of Cedric Edward Diggory Cullen. and they end up fucking up the entire timeline so that the Nazi the all the Nazis won this time like this now what? the death eaters run what? Hogwarts wait, and like everything's wait, what, and everything's evil fucking... and fascist he completely undoes all of the good that happened in the original movies and and like now the bad guys are in power cuz he completely fucked over the timeline and wait, like, hmm, what, sorry. How did what, what, do you do? You literally mean like the Nazis won because this takes place post World no, War II. No, I mean how the they, would they yeah. Just... Well, they didn't intru- they didn't introduce real Nazis into the storyline until uh, into Grindelwald. But in Cursed Child, like the Death Eaters win, starting in like the fourth movie, they completely fuck everything over, and uh, Are, is, and, is that and it just, like, it just it... becomes this mess. And I can't remember the specifics that well, but like it was an awful story <laughs> like it was that so badly a... put together and introduced a billion new plot holes and not really well not accomplishing much in the end at all like I, I it's funny because it's funny because no matter what like so the triwizard tournament obviously was rigged from the start uh and no matter what would have happened um vampire boy would have had to uh he would have died regardless like there's no outcome where he didn't die um so like mm-hmm. it uh, harry couldn't have done like there's no change that harry could have done to to like prevent the death like again this is something you can just you could take the time machine and just go back and watch that moment when the when they when they won the cup and you could have saw like oh shit like it's not it's not like we we could do anything to stop that like he he was gonna win either he was gonna be nice and let harry help him with the win or he was gonna take the cup for himself and then just be alone with Voldemort. Or I guess, uh, what was the guy's name? Worm, Wormstrom, Worms, Worms, what? Worm, 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 but everyone that has like the worst like fucking the name. name. <laughs> w- Willie, I don't know. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, the, guy, uh, the, the guy, Mo- Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs. It's Wormtail. Is that yeah, Wormtail. I don't Those know. The, the guy who had like a little. He had a little who muppet does the in his hand. Making. I don't know. It's the guy who like <laughs> that the Harry Potter is starts, a special. He starts like a witch's brew and just tosses in puppet Voldemort in there. <laughs> just, <laughs> there's like this little brew happening, and he's like, "Toss me in," and he like throws this. Oh, the one where he cuts his naked, arm off. Yeah, he throws this little naked Muppet Voldemort inside of the boiling <laughs> water. <laughs> He doesn't float up. He just sinks to the bottom. <laughs> are you even holding all this in? Like, are you like being really quiet while your girlfriend like pleasantly loves these movies, and you're just like, uh huh, wow, He's no, no, it out. No, yeah. Oh, or, or are oh, you God, like, no, I, are you completely no, I was, insufferable I was the whole dying. time? I was dying when he did that. When he just yeeted him, I was like, wow, he just killed the Dark Lord himself. Good fucking job. Like, drown the damn thing in the fucking pot. Yeah, but like, are you, are you losing realize... your shit the whole time? And she's just like, yes. here's Drew. <laughs> God, it is so stupid. I, I told her, I was like, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't, I mean, you can, I'm happy you can watch Harry Potter. I'll sit in the room and just be a person alone while you watch Harry Potter and have fun. But I was like, I don't think it's made for me. I don't, I think I'm the worst <laughs> person to watch Harry Potter. Like, it can't. It cannot be a good movie for me to witness. And she's like, no, no, I want you to watch it. And she's like, this is, this is so dumb. Every, every, like, even the wizard fights are boring, which is impressive. Cause like, you would think of all the things, magic fights would be fucking cool to watch. But one, it's fucking gross. Like, whenever anyone fights Voldemort, cum just gets on the floor everywhere. And I fucking hate it. It is so gross. I don't know where it's coming from or who's doing the coming, but it's everywhere. Like I'm Harry and Voldemort. Theme. These Andrew it describes knows, Harry Potter the way that Colonel describes Star Wars. It, mm-hmm. Seriously, it's like they're all doing their. They're like they're whatever. I don't know what you call that. It's like the thing in Dragon Ball Z when like Goku shoots his Kamehameha and someone else is like, I could do that too, and they shoot a Kamehameha and they're like pushing it together. And it's oh like, yeah, one of these is good, but. But instead of it or being cool point, like it is in like Dragon Ball Z, harder and somehow wins like the stalemate. Yeah, yeah. But instead yeah. of it being like cool like it normally is, it's like in it's Harry Potter, cool. it's like <laughs> I, I no, it's super device. cool. It's so boring. Uh, it's so it's it's always awesome, except for in Harry Potter where it's like it's happening, but while it's happening, it's just like spewing goo everywhere. 
And you're like, <laughs> what? Where is the goo from? And Getting no one's goo. casting any like water spells. It's not like some kind of particular magic. It's like the the energy of two wizards like slapping sticks together somehow makes like liquid come out of their magic wands and it's like weird <laughs> but it doesn't That's... it it doesn't happen if they like do the same spell at each other at the same time it's only when they do this weird like I don't, again like they're doing the kamehameha thing where they have to be doing like the, the the same but it's not the same spell it's like doing some kind of weird not spell spell it does no one ever sits down and like told me what it is like in the movies no one just sits down and is like by the way this is what happens when this happens like no mm-hmm. one's done that it's just the both some like in, instinctively they both just like Hah! and they just start doing beams at each other and i don't like i thought it was just harry i thought he was the only one who can do the weird goo beam but then i saw like uh dumbledore do it too and i was like what the fuck so everyone could just do goo beams at each other this is kind of weird why don't why do we even why do people fight any other way there's like the whole thing where they're like flying around like some kind of weird i can't remember if it ever happens in the books or if they made it up as a visual thing i hope it's it's like a visual how do you describe that i know there's disarming spells and there's stunning spells and there's like guards essentially that block spells and i think it's like there's like there's like, like like a fencing style like dual system Disarming spells are kind of insulting. Like a I don't. I may have fight. I don't appreciate that. Like disarming spells is called stupefy, um, and <laughs> no, it just means a, that you don't have a wand now, which is fucking rude. Like, what do you call it? Like people yeah, don't have wands. Wow. Stupid. What the hell? What, no, what is stupefy this shit? is the uh, is the uh, stun. Uh, Expelliarmus yeah. is is the uh, is disarm. I play. Oh. I remember. I played fucking Game Boy Advance games, where it's like you hear the fucking little bit crunched they, voice scream see, spell names all, over and over again. <laughs> Just, it I'm all looks the same, but it's like. <laughs> 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 It, it all like it i was legitimately it trying to same. collect all of the harry potter games to maybe cover at I some know. point until the fucking like it became the worst it's like harry potter became blizzard games and i'm like oh <laughs> fuck i just wanted yeah. to have a chill little time with the stupid game franchise where like lego hagrid happens because <laughs> lego Hagrid, ps1 oh, hagrid God. is a fucking mood I, he's it's, pretty it's awesome funny. he's like a like cylinder my, <laughs> yeah my, so my, one of my big complaints uh before the fascist movie happened was i was kind of getting uh i was kind of i was kind of getting annoyed i just kept telling my girlfriend i was like i don't understand how any of this like i don't understand how this wizard world works or this wizard school works because like 90 percent of it is just hey okay so there's r- these rules and no one can break them except Harry Potter. And when he does mm-hmm. it, it puts his life at risk. And when that happens, no one will go and help him. And when that does it, when when he's almost about to die or he comes back after almost dying, everyone's going to be mad that that happened. And no one at any point is going to take a self-reflective view and go, you know, maybe Hogwarts is the problem. <laughs> like no one ever just stops for a second. And it's like, you know, it was kind of a bad idea that we kept a giant fucking snake in the bottom of our basement. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Or like, I don't is, know. Is the maybe we the should baddies. Yeah. Like maybe this giant maze where there's a cup in it that no one else is allowed to look at before it goes into the maze. Maybe it would be a bad idea mm-hmm. to just let children touch that. Uh, maybe if they just like got to it and shot a beam up and said i found it that would be a better idea than like a weird grabbing thing because if we know that teleportation magic can happen maybe put like an anti-teleportation spell around like every (laughs) fucking arena that you have because this happens every time but like or i don't know like that he's like fighting a dragon and he's like i'm just gonna fly away and it's like what what you just he just left he just left the arena that counts and then like, he just comes back with no dragon and everyone's just like you did it harry i'm like I'm not, didn't he just cheat and he just fucking he just he's literally cheated he brought a broom in when no one else can do that because i don't know how his broom could hear him but whatever he like brought his broom back in flew away and like presumably everyone's assuming like oh you shouldn't have been here anyways maybe there's like a dark force helping him and he just goes off with a dragon and comes back without it and no one questions that no one's like huh i wonder if a dark force helped him with that fucking dragon nope he just we just trust harry he did it 
But also, Harry's a fucking liar. Don't listen to that. <laughs> like, what is this movie? What is this world? It wizards are like fucking dumb, holes. man. It's just, no, wizards are just like incomprehensibly incompetent. Like everything they do is just bad all the time. And their society continues existing because magic lets them be invisible. If it wasn't for that, they would have gotten creamed immediately by the rest of the world instantly. Like, these people say, are like, too fucking what dumb. I, I wouldn't, to do it I wouldn't say place. most of what Andrew's saying are actually particularly plot holes, especially since, like, in generally no. speaking, it's the people who are in power who are the bad guys, which explains literally everything. Like, oh, yeah, that made, like changes, actively, yeah. the people who control what people think or what's happening are the ones doing the bad stuff in the first place, which is every explanation for why this is happening, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it I, is very no, funny to second. listen to it. <laughs> That's, so first of all, that's not fair because fucking uh, who's what's it called the um when his name got into the thing like when his name when Harry's name was in the Triwizard Tournament for example, the rules were clear. The rules were very clear. You had to be this age, one from each house. The end. And then his name like fucking poofed out because of course it fucking does. It. The movies are named after him, and like it falls out and is like oh no harry potter how did how does his name show up in every fucking movie <laughs> uh and um and instead of just being like instead of following the rules that you set for yourself being like well he doesn't meet the age requirement and we already have someone from our school so we can't have two people because otherwise everyone else gets two people right and so mm -hmm. everyone agrees except for like the guy who set the rules what hmm. he's just like and he's not a bad guy he just was like no if the name came out, we have to use the name. I don't think that's how it's like, put. I think that it's literally like a binding, like it's the spell. The the spell is a binding contract. Like it's already it's already going. And it's like, well, this is bad, but we literally can't do anything about it because we well, we really guy, have a really bad system for this. Well, no, but they everyone acted like they could just not have him take place in it, except for the don't think like the ministry guy. The ministry guy was the only one who was like, no, no, he has to take part. It came out of the goblet. It's like. But the fucking you set that sounds what? But like you sounds, you you get to choose the rules for this thing. So like all why did it pick him? Uh, why did it pick sounds, two people from Hogwarts? Is that normal? Does that always happen? Like obviously someone could manipulate the gauntlet, couldn't they? Like what? No one does any in, any inquisitive uh, information into what happened here. Well, they yeah, just people all, think like, something bad happened, which is why they that that's why they go to thinking that that Harry did it. <laughs> That sounds Which, very close again, to what... Go ahead. I was saying, I was... Uh, you were explaining it. Like, I don't want to... Uh, no, I, I, and I just meant, like, everyone... Every, and again, everyone agrees. It's like, oh, yeah, this... I, ha, clearly, he had to have done something... And instead of just fucking kicking him out, which he was totally okay with, by the way, Harry was totally on board with not taking part in this fucking tournament as like a child. He's like, yeah, no, he said so himself. He was like, this yeah. isn't fair. And yeah, he's nope. like, I don't want to be here. And it's like mm -hmm. Dumbledore's like, no, no, you the he said for the so. Games. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, we will do it. And like the one, the only good character in this entire movie is that witch lady. I forget yes. her name. Um, mm -hmm. She's like the only. She's the only good character for two reasons. One, she actually feels like she belongs in this world. Everyone else feels like they just like are pretending to be wizards. But <laughs> she feels she's, she she's feels like she belongs Maggie here. Smith is great. Um, yeah, she's amazing. And secondly, she's the only one that shows. And I know she's acting, but she shows actual concern for children. Everyone <laughs> else is very sociopathic about the way that they deal with these fucking children in this, she looks in this so, environment. She just looks so like, dead. She's got that one eye that goes slightly off in a different direction. And you just see that sad expression over and over again of just like, yeah. oh, fuck, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, she's like, and, and she just sits there and she's like, She's like, I don't think, I mean, like, think of the children and fucking Dumbledore just, like, barreling through the wall. Fuck the children! Dark <laughs> Lord! And you're like, damn, dude, like, aren't you the headmaster? Some people, like, rely on you. And he's like, bah, fucking gotta kill Voldemort! And he's like, oh, all right, dude. Can I like, say his name? I Is that, oh, yeah, I mean, she everyone else show up to the podcast oh, no. and kick her asses. Oh, what a great, what a great <laughs> guest to have. We're gonna have so many clicks. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like it's such a weird I don't know it's it's funny like you see her in any scene that she's ever in she's like always real and compassionate and nice and everyone <laughs> else is just like confusingly how did you get here like you're all just like pretend you're all just muggles pretending to be wizards you can't fucking lie to me like <laughs> don't don't try that um 
Like, and everyone else is like terrible at like I she's the only one that doesn't seem to be breaking the rules. Like everyone else seems to be like skirting the line here about what's allowed. Like Hagrid just keeps certain animals around or just like or I guess I guess his brother counts as an animal, but he just like keeps him locked in the forest on the school grounds. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean he's dangerous, but I got a rope around him. It's okay. And I'm like, nice. I don't think that you should do that, Hagrid. I think you should I, like put him in a. I thought a, the a child spe- endangerment like a, would be your favorite part of the franchise. Well, but but, the, so, but I, I don't mind it just because it's like it. One, the it's CGI just, looks awful. This is boring. But two, it's not good um, child endangerment. Yeah, it's it's also really boring child endangerment. But the uh, no, but like this this like again, you're in a wizarding world and you have this like I don't know. It's I guess is a giant. He's not taller than a tree, so I don't know if he's really a giant, but like a big old boy. He's not tall and he's a giant. Apparently, That's he's some giant gatekeeping I, right there. I can't tell if he's like dumb as rocks or if he's just like uh, optimistic um, about everything. <laughs> but like, well, like he gets shot in the he gets shot in the arm with an arrow and he doesn't react. He's just like, oh. Huh. <laughs> like and i'm like i don't are you are you like unaware that you've been hit or are you just like oh they probably meant they just didn't mean to hit me like i, I don't know what you like how do you react to that way you just like he's just sitting there he's like oh snap arrow out oh must have been the wind. moves on mm-hmm. yeah like i don't know they told me the joke give me the jitters but it's uh but like he's keeping this fucking dangerous creature on school grounds near fucking children and like i guess dumbledore has to know uh there's no way he doesn't if he doesn't then like damn dude you should probably check out your forest every now and again isn't that part of your property like you have a guy whose entire job is like forest upkeep or whatever i don't yeah, know what he, it's well, called I, I think that's uh i think that's haggard he's the groundskeeper well yeah <laughs> haggard's the groundskeeper but i'm saying like he what he just he just he just lets like i, I can't imagine haggard is lying to dumbledore <laughs> about his brother being there I think, I think well, like, he lied about like well, they have a, giant they have a rule not to go into, and there's a rule not to go into the crazy woods. shit. Well, that doesn't make it okay, Keith. Just because yeah. there's a rule not to go into woods doesn't mean it's okay to keep fucking lava in the woods. No, like it's I, not, I'm just it's saying a, that this it's point, a liability at the thing. point you're it complaining means about the sued. giant, you've already skipped mm-hmm. past the part where there's a giant spider. Well, well there's a giant spider. There's a fucking army. There's an army of centaurs. There's like whatever those creepy skeleton horses are. I don't. I, are those dangerous? I don't know. They eat meat. I'm gonna assume they're dangerous. <laughs> they're like weird as fuck, and they and no one can meat. see them. Like they're invisible to, except the people who've seen death, and they eat meat. Fuck that, dude. That's danger. That's pure <laughs> danger. What the fuck? Could you imagine you're hanging but, out in the woods and a rabbit just disappears, and you're like, where the fuck that rabbit go? <laughs> and it's just, oh. like, like, what? But, what, but, what it's against what the rule for the yeah. children to go out into the woods. And wait, would that count? <laughs> would they be able to see the horse eating because they saw a rabbit die? Would that I think count? Or they have to see people? It's die not our problem, oh, okay. right? The, uh, wait, I mean, I, as, I like the as the school rules. administrator, they have the rule. So who gives a fuck if they go wait, in the woods? Has, that's on them. Oh. Also, that that movie introduces the only good. So I the 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 what's it called? I forget her name now, but whatever. That witch lady is the only good adult in the entire Harry Potter franchise, and the best child in the Harry Potter franchise is Luna, like yes. the best character. Yep, she Luna Lovegood is, is legitimately like the best character yeah, in the franchise. She is the only good character. Like any like any time she's on screen, I'm like, oh thank God, the that, savior's here the to make this movie bearable. Was just like, so fun. <laughs> Oh, she is just on point. Every line delivery, every scene, like her facial reactions are just always great. She is perfect. I I enjoy every scene with her in it. And like, it's <laughs> it's so confusing that like, one, it's very confusing that it, there's too much screen time given to a lot of other characters that I kind of wish just stopped being in the movie entirely like all of the weasley children could please just go into a dumpster (laughs) and not bother me again i would appreciate it um like i i don't i don't know it just i want like can there be like an eighth movie that's like just called luna and an attack line (laughs) and just it's a whole movie for her i don't want anyone else in it just her doing some wizard shit and having a good time just that's it i just want to have fun totally with this character. Need. She's great. Is is She's there great. Any, any new movies? No, no uh, yeah, not. no. There, there. Uh, the trailer just came out for the third Fantastic Beast movie. Well, okay. Wow, I guess that's we're counting the extended candor. They're making a yeah, thing, but that's 
that's yeah. with the other that's a site that's a site uh story right yeah we're not talking i think it's they're also guidance at this i think point. they're also trying to i don't remember if this is real or if it was a fan trailer actually but they're but they i think i feel like i, feel like I heard something about an attempt to make a movie out of cursed child which was the uh the really bad play yeah but no i i mm. The the most recent movie was I, I didn't really get to it, but the most recent movie was so fucking bad that I thought it was gonna be like a proper season four of Sherlock. Like they just kind of quietly never come back to this franchise again. Like the way that Divergent so. just stopped coming out and they never made the last one. <laughs> like they just gave up. Yeah. Which is the funniest thing to me. Uh because like for those that haven't seen it, uh The Crimes of Grindelwald is essentially like I think it's like two and a half hours of build up to basically just them trying to get to one meeting that the bad guy is going to have. And then when they get there, they don't do anything to stop it. It just happens, basically. Uh, and that's like the whole movie. But so it's a bunch of random scenes of like, oh, we've got to figure out how to get to a different country and uh, border crossing and this this force drama and that force drama. And this character that seemed maybe asexual or something is suddenly uh, has a case of the not gays. And here's this person. Suddenly there's a forced love interest storyline happening. And like, there's an entire, there's an entire plot twist that I genuinely would struggle to even explain why it was a plot twist or what its point in the story was at this point, because the, the story is bizarrely convoluted for having almost nothing that happens in it. But there's a part where you have an extended flashback where you find out that Zoe Kravitz was like, She's like a. I don't remember if it was even Zoe Kravitz doing the scene or if, it, if she was the baby in the scene. But there was a time, a long time ago, where on a ship there was a a, a family that had their that left their baby in char in like like they left their daughter in charge of their baby, and the ba the baby kept crying. So the baby. Uh, the fucking daughter swapped the baby with another baby somewhere else on the ship just so that she didn't have to deal with it and then that ship shank uh, sip that ship sank and that family and their original baby drowned and so this whole time they had somebody else's baby and that's like a bloodline plot twist about the the events of the movie somehow and it's like a look it's like an extended fucking like just an extended weird flashback to explain this incredibly bizarre but fucking hilarious storyline of like i'm sorry you wrote what you wrote a baby switcheroo <laughs> into your movie and then like the villain is like aha the the nazis are bad we should stop them from doing the holocaust and also maybe nuclear missiles are bad or whatever look at all these human atrocities shouldn't Wait, we do something about the villain them? says that yes and then yeah, we're like yeah and then the they're like that's yeah, bad that. we need to stop him and that's like the how the movie ends we gotta stop the guy that's recruiting people like he's he's well, like he like he might it's, be it's he, more i'm sure he's full of shit because he's all fascist I mean, coded and everything and he's like lying to get people to join but like <laughs> it's I, like the, the, I, I, I picked something a little bit you know it's no, just, well, well, or at least address like when one, your enemies are like like you made, you made multiple mistakes because you, you've one you've done the thing you shouldn't have done which is you, you've acknowledged the holocaust in the harry potter universe which means you now have to think about what the wizards were doing that whole time <laughs> because, because the holocaust seemingly uh, played vanishing out the same their way poop. and you're like vanishing their poop vanishing yeah they're too poop. busy vanishing <laughs> yeah. their poop at the time i wish when vanishment <laughs> poop was the thing that people were angriest about about harry potter <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. honestly. It's kind, it kind of makes me mad because they didn't vanish him the poop him the owl poop inside of the tower. So it's yeah. just a tower that smells like shit. And it's like, well, if you can do this for your own poop, why don't you do it for the fucking owl poop that's everywhere? It's how people get mail. What's wrong well, with you? Well, that's like, not only disgusting. have they made the mistake of acknowledging the Holocaust, they've also weirdly positioned the ad, the antagonist as being the one that wants to stop it, which raises just so many more bizarre questions. And then they further muddy the water by having like the one Jewish character who can seemingly read people's minds, join the antagonist, uh, and, like, like I'm mm. going to go help him now. And I'm like, wait a minute, you are like, you have the guy that's coded as fascist, but he's against the fascist, but also the Jew character is joining them. And it's like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing in this story, buddy? What are you, where are you going? And I checked, because it's a fucking Pokemon franchise. It's supposed to be about, the whole point of it being called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is because it's based on this character, Newt, who doesn't matter in the entire second movie, but it's still supposed to be his story for some reason. And the whole point is he's the, like, Newt Scamander is the person who wrote the book in-universe that's called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which was in the other Harry Potter books and movies. And so, like, he's mm -hmm. a, just a guy that travels the world and has a bunch of weird esoteric knowledge about the magical creatures. And it's supposed to be an excuse to visit all these fun magical creatures. And that's kind of what the first movie did. The second movie... I, the screenplay of wow. it 
literally the first one half page of it was like that. Literally, literally one page of the entire screenplay features him dealing with a beast for a, for a moment. And given that it's a screenplay, that's like 10 seconds of movie. <laughs> like that's like it's like double spaced and like a massive amount of white space on the page because it's like people talking and it's all script. So it's like incredibly spaced out to make it 300 pages when it's like a 50 page book, basically. And it's like that's the only time in all of the second movie he does anything with an animal, which is the premise of the fucking franchise. <laughs> it's like they literally made it one movie deep and they threw the protagonist's premise in the garbage and we're like let's uh now it's about being a prequel now it's literally like what if like it's, oh. it has every sin that prequels have which is to constantly be like making the mistake of of like trying to hyper explain a bunch of stupid things from the future and have way too many cameos so your prequel character magically <laughs> crosses the path of every significant character that was alive at the time and and it becomes this hyper convoluted excuse to make another voldemort basically and then but you're also like yeah. you also made the weird mistake of like like things keep changing back and forth but at the time it's like oh no you had jude law and you made him turn into uh, a, a worse actor which at the time people thought was up to was up to some real dark shit uh so they had to deal with the time that fucking jude law transforms into giant Depp, and you're like oh no uh <laughs> It's, but that's now, what the fuck is happening now he's this changing it. I, but the third one he's changing into a different character now right is he i think they're keeping giant yeah, depth because like the no the several several revelations that keep happening in that storyline of I, I of the court case last or whatever I, last i saw i think they they swapped him out for someone else um i, I don't i'll probably never watch it i never watched the second movie it's firmly Let's in like see. like just reading the script of Crimes of Grindelwald was enough to make the entire Beasts franchise be up there with like the DC franchise for me where I'm like, I can't I can't I can't bring myself to watch like Man of uh, like Batman versus Superman and Justice League. I would lose my mind. All right, I got to I got to bounce, guys. I got a place to be in about 15 minutes, but it was Sounds fun. good. Look at yeah, you yeah, having engagements. To yeah, do. see you around. Enjoy talking talk about, about fascist literature or whatever you've been doing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Famous topic. Of the, of the, please stop See talking. No, that's uh, not. Uh, no, that's so. Did you say the, so, yes. the wrong uh, Johnny, the right Johnny Depp is Johnny Depp is leaving for the third movie, so it's, yeah. he's going to be recasted again. So every movie, Grindelwald, Grindelwald has had a new face. Long. Yeah. No, uh, it's a different person. <laughs> it's the fucking like. It's the fucking uh, Doctor Horrible quote. It's like sometimes people are deep. You get a layer deeper, and they're like a different person. And actually, and 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 sometimes there's like a third deeper layer that's the same as the first. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, <laughs> it will yeah, it will be interesting. Um, it's it's. I think it's fun though. I think it's fun that this franchise is like a hot dumpster fire, and they just like WB is really committed to having this work because they're like come, give us like she has to give us another harry potter right like she has to <laughs> she just hasn't got her mojo back yet she just she'll give us another harry potter soon and like i don't like wv just can't like come to terms with the fact that this like that harry potter was an accident it wasn't skill hmm. like it wasn't some kind of like oh this was a well thought out like great execution it's just like no, this all just happened in a lucky ha happenstance during a time where it like just became advantageous because it was like just a lot of stars aligned to make this happen. And yeah. like it's not that it's not that she's like an incredibly well written author. Um, she doesn't have like I don't I again from what I can tell from movies, it's not like her stories are interesting. It's a lot of just like it's a lot of contrivances and a lot of ignoring the world for excuses for like plots to happen when it, it you can still have an interesting like there's a like the wizard world is interesting it just doesn't get any time to be interesting because it's so focused on this really boring suboptimal thing happening at hogwarts so that uh, is almost never interesting it's like today at hogwarts we opened like the fifth chamber in the fucking west wing that no one's seen in 200 years and it has a butt in it and we're gonna talk to that butt and that butt's gonna give us a fire spell and that fire spell can be used to open another door and like it's all this like arbitrary really unnecessarily complicated like convoluted complicated bullshit 
Um, and the outcome is always like, and now Voldemort got more power. And it's like, what the fuck? Why do we even do any of this? <laughs> Wait, like every, that's, that's all every movie ends happens? with every literal fucking movie of Harry Potter is like, and now Voldemort's like more powerful. And it's like, why did we even show up today? Like, let's just go <laughs> home. Like everything we do makes him more fucking powerful, apparently. But like the wizard world, like anytime you're not dealing with Voldemort, anytime you're like the movie wants to just like gloss over that and forget that whole boring plot happened exists and it goes into the wizard world proper it's really fun there's like cool things that people do or like uh like scoop their poop with magic <laughs> uh no there's like there's like one part where they're uh, uh, i will say like, once again this... two and three are not about voldemort no but it... although two does I end mean... up to being about the tom riddle diary which is voldemort's diary but it doesn't make him strong yeah. in fact it makes him weaker because it turns out to be it's retconned eventually to be one of the horcruxes I... So that I was guess. bad for Voldemort. But, There's no upside of that of that one. And three was yeah, just but, was just serious black. Which what a fun character. Glad he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, serious is that one that I, I didn't even know I, he I, I died. I, know which one. I, I just I just thought he left. I thought he just like wanted to like to bounce out before uh <laughs> like before he got caught or something. Like yeah, I no, he, he, got, just was he got hit to... by a vada Kedavra. That's the death spell. I didn't remember, so I just like he just was like I'm spell? going back into That's the portal, yeah. Harry, power. and he just like he just like well, vanishes back into the, the portal. It's the forbidden. They're the unforgivable spells. If you if you cast them, you're instantly like that. That's criminal activity. Oh right. There's the death. There's a there's a death spell. <laughs> there's a torture spell, and there's a uh, a mind control spell. spell. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you uh, mind control or torture or kill somebody. Or even cast them at all, then that's that's it. You're pretty much fucked. Uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you, you you've got a career as a Death Eater because that's the only place in life you could really have for that point. There's no coming. Is back it auto? Did you get like auto branded? Is that like is that where the tattoo comes from when you cast one of those spells? Um, no, or, <laughs> no, that is so, so. Someone has to someone has to like catch you think, doing it, and then they're yeah. like, "Halt! Well, you did that." <laughs> Okay, who's gonna catch you if you use the fucking death spell? Like the person you killed? <laughs> I, like, well, come on, who's who's going to like the middle of like town square with all the wizards you know, hanging around with their potions and are like death spell, death spell, death spell? And someone's like, oh, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to let that guy go. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know how they catch people in movies? They're looking through the door while the crime <laughs> is happening. <laughs> no, you don't understand. The slow, it's a misunderstanding. The camera slowly zooms in. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that spell. <laughs> how does that how does that work i guess like I, so saying the phrase isn't necessary to cast the spell you have to like put oomph into it uh i mean that's that's the spell casting lessons okay. it's like a process i, I like, don't need a, to roll a, d, a d20 I mean, well, it's, I'm just like, wondering, it's the same like, logic as D and D. Yeah, there's a there's a there could be a vocal and somatic and material cost depending on the spell. Usually, you have to I say the right F thing in the background. Yeah, well, it's like if, if it's got the V and the S, that <laughs> means you have to say the right thing and make the right gesture. And if there's an M, that means you need to have the materials to cast the spell. But nobody actually uses that mechanic in D and D, so everyone just uses the catalyst that skips that. <laughs> I pay attention. Because that's, okay. that's that a that's a really annoying mechanic. I'm I'm it just is. wondering because I I guess I I'm realizing that like I'm trying to remember how many times I hear people say spells that and not cast spells. Yeah, like, well, a lot of that it's it, a lot of that's also probably movie stuff to an extent of being like yeah. we're gonna have these cool duels between Voldemort and Dumbledore where like no one's really saying anything and all these like cracky there's like a, all these like big punchy noises are happening and so on and it's like it is punchy it is effective. Noises, I love it. It's a pretty effective. It's it's effective filmmaking. Like that scene is is a there's, pretty. It's that that was like. There's a lot of headlines of like, and that's that's when David Yates redefined spellcasting in in the Harry Potter franchise because they like they had to what? come up with like a whole new aesthetic for how it all even seems in a movie. Because uh, oh. it was complete like that was just completely different from. I think that was the like one of the larger departure from the books aesthetically. Western audiences need to watch like more anime. That's like <laughs> those are really boring fight scenes. Like it's just the the it's there's something about like a especially like a good example is the of uh, uh Dumbledore and Voldemort fight was like it would have been really cool if I if it if it 
if it didn't feel so asinine, I guess is the problem. Like it felt really like no uh kind of feel to anything that was casted. It was like, I'm gonna do fire. And Dumb uh, Dumbledore's like, no, you're not. And he's like, oh, okay. And like Dumbledore's like, I'm gonna do water. He's like, no, you're not. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna do glass. He's like, no, you're not. And like, oh. Okay, does anybody have fucking magic that they can do? And like now we're gonna do the wand thing where we both like shoot beams at each other I don't until know what one you would of them's stronger. From a magic fight that seems like magic fights can be interesting. Point. You can create like damage around the world, or you can create this like sense of fighting. Like the idea is it's that like, like Green Lantern like, fireballs stuff. Where it's like well, the interesting thing is like what are they gonna make with the with the ring as opposed to being like I shot you with my ring and then you died from getting shot by my lantern ring. Like, well, yeah, you're gonna, but that's, like, that's do what stuff it, with it not just like exist but that's and be it, like the but end. that's not what it feels like it feels like you're just doing the thing where it's like okay he just moved what the water it's not like he took the water he created some kind of like spire with it and like clasped it around uh voldemort to like drown him to death it was just like i'm gonna make a lot of water hit your feet and he's like no <laughs> it was like why why did you even do that like it, like Vol voldemort doing like throwing all the glass was still boring because it's just picking up glass and throwing it all you did was just not use your hands. Like, I don't, I don't, that's not interesting. Create I'm something so cool with it. <laughs> what like, your point is. Okay, so, so, okay, so here's the point. The point is, is that with magic, you can do anything, just like Green Lantern's lantern. It's interesting in that you can create anything with it. Like it, it would was, be it really was rad cool. as fuck when it like turned into sand because like that was how we repurposed no. it so that he could deflect it from being a dangerous thing. Like it's it's a it's a lot of like people but, having to react on the on the fly and turn and like turn the dangerous thing into something else or counter it in some way. Like that's that's, that, yeah, that's I don't I don't see what the problem would be there. It was good stuff. But that's boring. It's so Why? boring. It's, it's literally it's interesting. It's, it's literally like oh again, shit, the, what's he gonna do with that? Oh, he did a thing that's like specific to the problem, and look at him go. I literally I guess don't know how that's just, boring. Because it's just Uno carding. It's just reverse. It's you're just doing a reversal card and it's boring. Like I don't it's not interesting when you take glass and turn it into sand on yourself and you just get hit with a sandstorm. Like it okay, okay, okay. But I like it's not a threat no to idea. Voldemort. Like you're not you're not you're not taking this you're not turning this into a battle. You're turning it into like a a, a what's it called? It's literally um, a battle. But but that's what I'm saying. It's not. It doesn't feel like a battle. <laughs> you're all it's, I'm saying you're, this criticism you're, you're, makes no sense at all. No, I, I I'm I don't know how to. Okay, then I'm not describing it well. But the point I'm making is that there is a there's a way well, your to point create. Is that you just in many cases you're just like no th everything sucks. Fuck it. And so I'm just going to no, describe what I saw and say that it's bad. And that's the whole criticism so, so is because I, the, the I, I described the things that were on screen and they're bad by default because that's what I think the thing is. No, th so the <laughs> fight that happened prior to that, where they're like all being fancy ghosts flying around, shooting balls at each other, and like, hiya, hiya, like that was interesting combat. That was at least like dynamic, and there was stuff going on that like felt fun to watch. We're like, oh shit, that guy dodged that, or like, oh god, hit in the chest with that. Like, there's things happening, but when it comes to like these weird, uh, I, I don't, again, I don't know how to describe these. They're not like, they're not I, I, like rock, paper, scissors, I guess. They're just like, I'm going to throw a thing at you and you're going to turn that into something else, but not like you're not deflecting it. You're just negating it. And negation of an attack, I guess, That's is OK, but not though, if every single magic, thing is right? a negation. Like it's boring. Oh. It would be boring if every Dragon Ball Z fight is someone just like reflecting. That's what it felt like. I see. I, just like, I see what I mean. Andrew's Dragon Ball Z saying. fights it's are boring. They are but very boring. It would be more They're interesting boring. if they had to do like each each one's like, oh, I'm going to try to do something special with this. And it's like, aha, I create a solution specific to the problem that you posed to me as opposed to like energy ball, energy yeah. ball, punch, punch, punch. This one worked for some reason. This was Scream the good more. punch. All the other punches I, I could just so take, much. but this one killed me. Ah, uh, <laughs> like it's yeah. literally <laughs> more interesting than the thing you're comparing it to. I, I meant more of like I'm talking more about just like shooting the beams like if if it that's what it feels like is that everyone's just shooting a Kamehameha and everyone's just reflecting the Kamehameha and you're like okay well at some point it seems kind of stupid to like do this why wouldn't Voldemort I don't, I don't throw see how you can complain about fucking... the beams went, and then also complain that the rest of the fight is more interesting than the beams like you either want the part where they just do a stupid power fight and the power person wins or you want them to do interesting and innovative things throughout the fight, which is literally what the other thing is you're complaining I, about. Like you, you're, you're them, literally being like, I, I, I just don't like this, these movies. So I'm going to describe what happens to them and then no, say that I, what happened I was want, bad. I, so the closest it got was there in that same fight, 
uh when when uh, Voldemort does this the fire snake uh Dumbledore does a thing where he like kind of implodes the snake and shoots it back out but he doesn't turn it into like a weapon he just kind of like it just it is more of a diffusal like it doesn't Voldemort isn't phased or has to counter that he just like stands there and he's like oh uh? and like that's close to what I want I want him to like if he turned the fire around into another attack back at Voldemort and Voldemort's like oh fuck I don't know man I, the snake fire thing was my best thing and he has to like find a way to like uh to like oh i see uh, i think I not see counter but like dispel or like turn it back around like the idea should be that you but again like he created a fire snake that's interesting but like when uh when dumbledore then creates his like water thing he doesn't create anything out of the water he just gets a lot of water and tidal waves it into voldemort and voldemort's just like oh okay no and it's like well, okay and and like and then again, Voldemort just like yells and glass falls and he just he picks up the glass and throws it. He doesn't like creates a ball of glass and throws it at him. And Dumbledore's like, fuck, that's a lot of glass. It's just it's a it's a hail of glass. And it's not in it's not a, it's not a, a particularly interesting uh, attack. It's just a it's, it's just kind of like a desperate attack. It's a very boring like one of these has to hit you. Right. And he's just like. No, I'm just gonna make you a wall. He didn't make, do anything with the water. No. He he drags all the water out of the fountain. So one, he's using the environment. He's using something that's already there. Then he captures Voldemort in an entire globe of the water and levitates him into the air, trying to drown him inside of the water. Like it's a sphere of water floating in the air that's like all visually spectacular and shit. And then what happens is during a later deflection in the fight, the shockwave shatters all of the, the all of the windows throughout the entire building, causing this rain of glass down. And so Voldemort doesn't create glass. He takes all of that glass and sends yeah, it, he at, picks it up at uh, Dumbledore. And then Dumbledore is, is able to like shred it into sand and so on before it actually like ends up killing them. Like it's literally like a like it's like setup payoff action reaction like things are just ha things aren't just randomly happening it's the stuff that's around them and they're using it like the way you would do a fight scene but with magic like the mm. same way that like jackie chan uses the ladder that's around like they're using the shit that's around them and doing interesting things like i just i don't get I the guess... idea that's like oh it's just he doesn't do anything it's like and it's not interesting for any reason it's like there's, there's literally like they're literally interacting it's, with the yeah, environment just and coming up with solutions for the things that are happening to each other. It's like, what the, what what else do you want from a magic fight? I I'm imagining more like the the, the fire snake. I'm imagining more like you're creating uh you're creating cool the fire things snake out happened. of the elements. And I I and I said the fire snake's cool. I'm saying that the boring <laughs> part was his reaction to the fire snake. Like the like i think it was boring that he, the fire snake just got like poofed into nothing like he just kind of <laughs> uh, he just bounced the snake off of him and like pushed the fire back and that didn't really I like think, i don't I know your argument was more around using <laughs> magic in unpredictable ways to the viewer rather than coming up with i mean the, well it's, i'm it's i'm coming it's, I'm I, coming it's all unpredictable outside, to so. a sense because you don't know what you know like i, I there's like a there's a level of uh like you don't know exactly what you can do with magic because you're mm. uh you're like a dumb child and like don't and they don't ever explain the the how the entire world works so like technically mm. like no one ever said that there's a spell that you can uh create fire uh, reptilians with that's not like a thing uh, that just yeah but that's on. not what i mean i mean um, i thought you were talking about like here's the rules and now let's manipulate them in a in a in a fun way or in an interesting unexpected way rather than I'm thinking more yeah no I'm just thinking more of like uh, again like green lantern like you have magic you can do literally anything with it and I would expect something a little bit more grandiose for, than for poor yeah, I would just expect listening something... to us yell about the dumbest thing for sorry <laughs> I, I'm just expecting something that's more grandiose yeah like uh I posted a link. I'm expecting something that's a <laughs> oh, little bit fire more snake yeah yeah so he makes like a dumb fire snake but when the fire <laughs> when the fire snake uh <laughs> happens he just kind of like no and the fire snake's like oh shit okay then he just like pushes it back and Voldemort's like nah he just like nans it away like what the fuck come on dude i don't I know didn't like that like he, I, you could just kind of like, like nah no you know what it didn't work never mind and he just like brushes the fire away and i'm like what the fuck what is why why did why did dumbledore have to do all of this like hocus pocus to just turn it around on him if he could have just said like nah 
Like, why, if Voldemort can yeah. nah fire away, why can't Dumbledore nah fire away? Like, are you telling me that he knows something that... No, fuck off. Like, just... He didn't want to nah the fire away. He wanted it to why, become an Why attack. did you want to fucking nah the fire away? Why did you well, want to turn it back? It's almost like I had a know? sentence to finish. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You literally Sorry, like no, are arguing with the first half of the sentence that's still talking, and then the second half was the answer to the question. <laughs> Alright, go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of old it's just it's a weird thing to come after. Like there's there's so many things to complain about, and you're like, oh, the, everyone's favorite oh. scene? I hate it. It's stupid. Oh, this, the, it is everybody's I hate video. things. <laughs> I don't know the fucking. I don't. That's just, that's like a dangerous statement, but it's a well received scene. Like that's, mm. this. This is not. This is not like. Oh man, Last Jedi throne room fight controversial. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Let's argue about the dagger that gets edited out of that one scene or whatever. It's like a lot of people are generally like, oh fuck. Especially since it's like a whole movie of like you, you're like it's what this is like the fifth movie, so it's like. I've seen this person yeah. do a little charm where a thing levitates. I've seen this person painstakingly make potion for like a day and then they get one hour of looking like somebody else. What are they going to get away with? And you're like, oh, fuck, the two super wizards that are like the god tier characters of this cinematic universe are like going at it. And they can do a bunch of shit that you didn't even know was possible in these movies. Like the scale of it is... Yeah absurd and you're like this is oh jesus like the main character is hiding in a fireplace in the corner because shit's completely fucked <laughs> and it's like it's just it's like that's this is storytelling and it's a like well-made scene that does that story like it's like one of the least applicable things to be complaining about it's so weird i, I again i i've watched in my time i've seen a lot of combat both magic physical magical physical in my um, time like one of my uh, favorite yeah, things, I, like I, one of the big things to complain about, is how the seventh movie suddenly introduces a weird mirror that links to someone you've never heard of, and like it was, it was established like five books ago, I think, but they never did it in the movies because they didn't know it was going to be important later, and so like the characters just suddenly are interacting with this weird mirror shard that's really important that you've never heard of before, and you just have to like run with it. Or, yeah, the fact that I, time travel is introduced in the third movie and would have fixed a lot of things all the time. Oh, no. Yeah, well, I mean, I, again, it's magic world. I just assume that, like, whatever you fix can just be unmagic. Like, you could just be like, I fixed time. And it's like, nope, magic said no. And it's, it's just a back and forth. Like, I don't know. It's just, again, these are, like, something, like, there's this, yeah, there's like, the, I guess to me, there's an expectation of like, you can do literally anything. And it felt like a, a like a Pokemon battle or it's just people <laughs> trying to do like elements uh, attacks with each other. And some like, nah, I'm, I don't have, that's not super effective to me. Sorry, but and I'm going to throw water. And it's like, nope, not super effective to me. And it's like, you're just like trying a bunch of shit. And one of them's, I guess, going to work. But there's no like, I, I was expecting they would have their own brand of, uh, like, I don't know, magic that's unique to them. Something that only they can do, that they would fight against each other with, and that, like... Like a giant flaming would... snake from the snake-themed guy? Which, that again, only he does. yes, looks, looks pretty fucking... Again, I have not a single time complained about the fact that the fucking fire snake no, exists. No, I'm just saying I... it, it's the exact counterpoint to the complaint yes. you're having. It's also... And, I can't stress this and, enough, audience. We're complaining about, like, one minute of video. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no crazy things and... happened in the twelve things that happened in this one minute. Well, <laughs> again, like, because, Jesus Christ. need I remind you, Keith? Why does that one minute the, have the... a second and third example of the thing that I said would be good? So, it's because like, in this the two, thing you because liked happened and it's only a minute long. Because in the two minutes, <laughs> it, because this is the two minutes and twenty five seconds of of only thing, the only thing in this movie that wasn't stupid fucking bullshit. Because the rest of the movie didn't have to happen, and it's a waste of my fucking time. It, this is the only thing that could have made up for it, which is like, oh, cool, big old wizard battle. And it didn't do anything. And it was like, all right, so the whole time was a waste. I could have just skipped the whole fucking movie, and nothing would have changed. <laughs> Good to know. Why are we here? And, like, so I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed that, like, I don't know. I didn't. I don't feel like. I feel like the the fire snake was the only thing that was like, oh, here we go. And then the rest of it was downhill. And I was like, well, then what the fuck? Like what? What? Why? Anybody could fight fucking doofus here with no nose. Then 
like you could just nope away fire you can nope away water you can i didn't even see how he, like it doesn't even show like what did voldemort do to get out of water he just like kind of swam and then just got out of it <laughs> like did he cast a spell like what did he do what what the fuck happened to make him stop i don't i don't no one's saying anything and because no one's saying anything i have no context to what's happening because visually it doesn't fucking make sense it's just like a lot of things happening but there's no context for it like did Dumbledore summon water? I don't know. He's waving a wand. I guess he did. But what did he summon it to do? Is he like levitating the water? Is he turning it into? I, I don't like what is what is he doing with the water besides just like fucking orchestrating to me, to it, me to it, do, it looks to me. Like, it looks like Harry Potter getting too close to the danger and distracting Dumbledore. Dumbledore when he takes a moment to get him the fuck away is what makes him lose his concentration long enough for Voldemort to break through. But that's oh, just that's me, like, the, drawing the conclusion of a series of scenes shown in chronological order in a way to tell a story non-verbally. But... I mean, you could have just, like, you could have <laughs> just leaned filmmaking. your leg out and kicked... I don't know, you could have leaned your leg out and kicked the boy back. Like, I don't <laughs> think you needed to, like, like, break your concentration on holding the most powerful evil wizard in the planet just so you could say, like, back a little bit, Harry boy. I'm also confused like, by the he, idea he, the whole movie doesn't have to happen. I'm like, I mean, I guess the plot's not important if you ignore it, but, like no it the movie again, had a plot seriously, this the, and yes and it get one it gets kind of well sort of uh i guess i guess like the only important thing that happened was the people got broken out of azkaban but otherwise uh oh that's where that word comes from <laughs> yeah it's from the stupid harry potter it's it, like a it, prison it in the middle of the ocean like that wizard alcatraz yeah oh wizard alcatraz i mean it's Wait, also uh, an island in the middle of the ocean wow good job are guys. the mentors as yeah. well from from harry potter the dementors yeah yeah the, the guards yeah. of of uh azkaban i'm gonna I get such well. a weird amount of flack for this episode for defending people, people harry potter that. when it's not popular too but you're, it's just your <laughs> points are so frustrating that i can't help but like be like what the fuck are you saying either I way uh, it's it's i that's just the way i don't know i don't i don't think this i, don't, I think the the whole fifth one was a waste of time i think we could have just it's literally my favorite book <laughs> in the I, series I, not I, I'm in not, the world <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying i'm not saying and again i haven't read any of these i don't know maybe it's better in book form but it I, is weirdly the longest it, it is the longest book which became the shortest movie which is a weird juxtaposition it's yeah it, it was just, the, uh, i don't know the first there's david nothing, yates movie because they kept changing nothing directors in it, Nothing in it felt good. Uh, it just all <laughs> was disappointing. And I just walked away like, man, what the fuck? That was, I guess. All right. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I, again, I feel like we, we were, we were all like, even, even the fascist guy was in Dumbledore's office with the fucking truth wall. And you could have just went to the stupid truth wall and fucking shown the fascist. That fight. and Dumbledore was there. He could have just been like, "Hey, now good, good that you're here. I'm glad you came. I could show you on my truth wall, and this is, uh, this is all true." Like, my truth. What is the truth wall? I can't tell what you're talking about. I don't know. He, I don't remember what it's called. He, Dumbledore has some stupid fucking fountain, sink fountain that he washes his butt in, and he, uh, <laughs> he doesn't need to. We're talking. Yeah, about it's the yeah, pen scene. It, no, he it, can. He can only, it's he can only the, vanish. It's, the poop. Can't it's, watch a, it. it's a pool that it's a pool of memories. Yeah, there you go. Pool of memories. And he there and clearly go. he's pulling them out and putting them in there. So it's not as if like the, the fountain is just making shit up as it goes along. He's pulling the memory out. Yeah, it's a storytelling so device this, for for experiencing memories, basically. So have have the fucking fascist guy pull out the memory from Harry. Of him fighting Voldemort in the graveyard and then have everyone gather around and look in the fucking fountain and da da we can now all see that the boy isn't lying and there is in fact a fucking bad guy hanging well, out you're ignoring and the fact that everybody that on. is actively blaming Harry and, and denying it, his truth are all people that benefit from not believing him Meanwhile, the people that do believe him already that 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 would help Harry against Voldemort already believe him usually. So there was no reason to prove anything to begin with because they're already on his Except side. Except for the fact that so the you're... people who are benefiting are people who are actively only making him better. Like you, it, there, it, and also making the Harry only and, and again, remember, it's not it's not everyone. Everyone's just kind of a, it's just a two faction belief system. 
where everyone is rallied behind this one guy who's saying something, which again, you can just find, ignore that fucking guy. Just bring everyone else into a room and show them the stupid memory pool. And because that's all that happens at the end of that fucking movie. After that fight, everyone just shows up in the fireplace and goes and just sees him like, hey, 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 and like vanish away. And they're like, ah, fuck. That's and what you the meant movie by the ends. bad guy dancing. <laughs> There's so much decoding yeah. to do to figure out which yeah, scene like, you're complaining because, about. Because he like, he like. <laughs> he's, he's talking about the like, fact that the fight ends because essentially uh the day the work day starts at the ministry and people start coming yeah. in and they literally see voldemort and it's like oh fuck the guy who's yeah, covering like, this all up is his story is out he can't he can't hide the return of but, voldemort anymore because yes, there he, he was i saw he could, him he could he could literally just say that it was like oh it was just dumbledore making a projection or harry is just casting a stupid spell he's the dumb kid playing <laughs> a prank like fuck off dude fight? are you telling me that you believe it because you saw this fucking dumb specter not even wearing pants by the way dancing <laughs> over a child like because are you kidding me this is, is fucking stupid mean? Yeah, he's like just in a fucking like, Reaper robe, and he thinks he looks cool, but he looks like he's homeless. Get some pants, damn. Fucking guy, just go down to the fucking wizard outlets or something and buy some black jeans. No one's fucking stopping you, Voldemort. God damn it. It's fucking embarrassing. Like, everyone else, like, I guess Dumbledore also doesn't wear pants, so fucking maybe it's the fashion sense. But, like, it's it's either way. All that matters is, is that <laughs> it's it's it, it is funny Can you just to say me this is very that, confusing colonel yes <laughs> yeah yes. Like, hearing a story via andrew will do that it's all i'm saying <laughs> like, is what? that it's really i know what he's talking about and it takes me a while to figure out what he's talking about all, all i'm saying is i do not i do not understand how seeing <laughs> what looked like a mirage by the way because when they did show up only like four people showed up along with the one guy who was <laughs> lying about it all so it's not like everyone in the ministry saw it it's like four people well, he's, dis he's disappearing show into the with flu power flu and powder yeah flu he's network. just vanishing during that time so like anybody could have been like because they travel via fireplaces yeah so so any like people could have showed up and been like like what i'm sorry what was that something i don't know i man i just woke up i don't know what's going on here like it, it four p you could easily tell four people like no 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 that was definitely it's all dumble dumble double he's doing <laughs> dumble, shit. Dumble, and, dumble. <laughs> and, and people would have been like oh i guess we believe the fascist guy anyway so we're definitely susceptible to believing him like why did why did seeing half a mirage uh also covered in dust uh voldemort which you could kind can make out but dumbledore's also standing in the way of it so it's really hard to see him like straight on that was enough for people to be like oh shit he's back rather than like it just he could just turn around and go like nothing to see here that was just a lie and everybody'd be like oh i guess it was just a lie the, the leader said so like they just <laughs> i don't know man it's so fucking stupid you have devices that can fix this problem you have magical tools stop acting like you have to like Everyone has to like see shit. You're, That's, you're going back that and forth whole... so rapidly to like it's so easy to prove this, but also, but also the literal proof they saw is completely uh, it could be completely second guessed. No, I'm saying because if that if what so the argument I'm trying to make is that if using the the devices that would be way more easier to prove validity are not acceptable uses in this scenario, then why the fuck is this a, an acceptable use to prove validity? Like, it doesn't make sense. Either all of the ways to prove validity do not work because they're all fucking under this shitty mind control idea of ignorance that like, no, he's not back. Or you can just use a better way than having Harry get beaten up by a fucking guy without pants. I'm just saying <laughs> there's way better ways I to convince like it, people. I feel like this particular like, hill is a bit more of like a cinema sin slash like how it should have ended a style approach Again, to film that isn't this, really this the movie point of ha, stories this movie is awful i it's just this movie i'm not saying like that i think the triwizard tournament's also kind of fucking dumb but i'm not going to argue about it because whatever that's fine but like this is egregiously dumb every single avenue is like all all of this was so worse by just not doing the potion like you lost an entire fucking portal of predictions every single one of them is gone now because you couldn't just trust a dumb fucking child who's literally by the liter by the way literally again the only fucking asshole to have survived from this that we've <laughs> all agreed on we've set the stage here we all agree that harry potter is the only fucking kid who's ever survived this 
And I don't think, for any fucking reason, by the way, that he is excited to show up from Hogwarts every year with more cuts and bruises than any other fucking kid because he keeps fighting a pantsless wizard. Like, I'm telling you, dude, maybe just believe the kid. It's getting weird now. Yeah. Like... (laughs) I wouldn't go back after that. <laughs> I, honestly, it's it, the only reason Harry goes back is because when he goes home, he gets abused by his family there too. Like the dude has oh, no, no reprieve. He is either abused no, by a, really it's a shitty. Time. It's a he either gets abused by really shitty like 1970s British people, or he gets abused by like a pantsless <laughs> wizard guy with no nose. 1970s British people, <laughs> the worst breed. <laughs> Yeah, it's the worst kind. But like, <laughs> it's it's so weird. Like, they still I, believe I don't know, in man. Churchill. It, 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 honestly, it's I still- think the dad is Churchill. But I'm I'm just saying, <laughs> it's like, it's it's so weird. Like, I at some point I would think that it, it would be more reasonable for like, I don't know, maybe Harry could live with the lady across the street. She seems nice. I mean, she's living her like she's a wizard, but she seems to be living a nice, calm life oh, no, over she's there. A- not. Uh, shit. I forgot the word. Uh, she can't cast spells. She's wizard born. She's the opposite of a muggle, where she, where she's a uh, wizard born, but or sorry, she's the opposite of a what they call mud bloods. If you're a racist, but I actually don't remember what they call it. If you're not every, racist, by the way, every every wizard is racist. But she's in this the world, she's the opposite but... of a muggle born wizard in that she's wizard born, but she can't. But she's not magic. Is their okay, neighbor fine. a then squib? You know That's what? the Even mean better. word they have because there's a bunch of weird mean words, and they usually don't replace them with not mean words. So I only know the mean word. Yeah. Wow. That, so, that is, so oh, yeah. it's really a nasty sounding word, dude, isn't it? Squib. Dude, like the, it's like, oh god, you call people yeah. that? What does that mean? Why do they, I don't know if I want to know. Why, why does the wizarding world words? has a the wizarding world has a weird like blood fetish? Like they are super oh, yeah, particular they're all about, blood. about blood. Well, they're blood. English. It's that doesn't mean that's not an excuse and also not all of them don't be fucking racist some of yeah, them come yeah, from but other the countries stories are all from england and take place in england and it's like there's really there's, noticeable like oh this is a a weird priority system you got here i wonder what that what that says about you but but there's other but we the want to talk more about superior other, breeding but the other but the weirder part is that every every wizard person is that way it's not just like the british wizards it's like the french wizards and Oh yeah, the it's also a thing Bulgarian where like the villains are wizards? like too into it, but the good guys are also still into it in a way that's supposedly Every, no, less no. bad. Everyone is equally invested into the bloodline thing. There is yeah, no such thing as like it's a just separation. That they all, it's between... just that they make the weird call of like they they make the weird the, the, there's the weird thing where they uh they they clear that clearly the bad guys are bad guys because of how much they care about bloodlines when with like no irony about the fact that like because it's an english story like they everyone cares way too much about bloodlines and stuff yeah it's too it's too yes. baked into it like it's the fucking skywalker saga also i can <laughs> skywalker saga yeah, no, it's what I hate, I hate so much about fucking Star Wars is it's too much bloodline shit that makes the narrative creepy and weird. And then when they finally that, got away from it in Last Jedi, they're like, what if we retconned it into actually being still canon? Fuck you. I'm like, no, please. That movie also Let this franchise be about really, more than one family. The fifth movie also starts out confusing because it has him, like, casting a spell to save his life from, uh, uh what were they called? Death Eaters? Uh, uh, the Dementors. Dementors. Are you, are you talking about the, the the death looking dudes as opposed to the, yeah, the, the dark with, wizards? The thing with the yeah. silly circle mouths. Those things are they, funny as fuck. Yeah, they um, uh, they suck your soul out in their little like death robes, and they uh, sure. they make you feel cold and sad inside. And the 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 best <laughs> the best thing you can do is fight them with a, a magic spell that has a special Pokemon personality quiz that shows like your personal spirit animal. But uh, if you don't have that, the best the second best option is chocolate. <laughs> because it makes you feel what? good. Because that's not fun? true. You, it's you true. throw chocolate at them. No, you eat chocolate to help fend off how fucked up it is. That Lu- oh, uh, oh. uh, Lupin gives Harry Potter uh, <laughs> chocolate on the train after the first encounter with the Dementors because they're introduced in the same scene. And it's a. Uh, I thought you meant it, 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 it helps you recover. It helps you like, no, like it helps you recover from the experience because it's you're like you feel cold inside and horrible. Oh, big old it's, babies. Anyways, well, they, it's a lot of emotional this... storytelling and whimsical, like young adult fiction and I, stuff. Like that's the point in many cases is I the know. kind of silliness it's, of it. 
It's fine. It's stupid. You, you it's, watch it's, anime. Like, that's how that's the fucking DNA of that genre in many cases. Yeah, and I, com- I complain about that, too. Don't act like I don't. <laughs> then, the, you're, uh, then you're watching anime wrong, too. <laughs> no, I'm not. The... Uh, <laughs> the no, so that I, I don't care about them that they're irrelevant they just show up and do funny things they uh so they show up um <laughs> funny and things. harry basically I like, the, I like the, the way he describes things that attack children <laughs> it's, it's fine it's fine they, they never win so who cares <laughs> what a the, funny uh, little munchkin look at him go going after oh he's gonna little, he's gonna I've suck the soul out of a boy <laughs> i have yet to see a single dead child from it so i don't you think never- they do a very good job You've never seen a single dead child? This is literally no, the from, dead child from line. the Dementors. From oh, the Dementors. Yeah. They you know, never they succeed. <laughs> so I'm under the impression that they are just there to cause like literally just some incapable. kind of they're just like, yeah, they're little gremlins. They just show up like, hey, I'm gonna t- steal your pants and run away. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> like, that's it. They, they don't really they <laughs> don't cause any stolen. harm. They're I'm they're just dumb little like pants. no one they're stole his tricksters. pants, he just doesn't wear pants. I mean, that's true. The, uh, I don't know that. I don't, maybe that's like the seventh book. They explained that he's upset because <laughs> Harry's dad stole his pants too. Oh yeah, because uh, you're not finished yet, huh? <laughs> no. Um, oh man, uh, the so seventh movie's yeah, my like, favorite. So they're coming in, they're like sucking kids, and uh, which that sounds that's way better. Don't, that's yeah, don't say, don't um, phrase it that way at all. What are you well, doing how do you to want me? me to phrase it? Don't. Uh, uh, so, we've literally already said it several other ways. <laughs> Uh, so they're, 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 they're teaching kids about souls and they, uh, um, so Harry's like, yeah, no, I don't want what you're selling. And he just tells him to go away. And it's just him and his cousin. I don't remember what it is. Uh, uh, live in bully. (laughs) 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 How else would you describe that? (laughs) His live in bully. That's, the, that's fucking great. <laughs> I don't know what else it is. Yeah, no, his piece, piece of shit cousin that he has to live with because his parents are dead, and he just fucking, oh yeah, his cousin. Okay, yeah, he just I think it's it's, it's probably um, his cousin. Yeah, I don't. It's definitely so, it's some kind of extended. Fa- yeah, because it's uh because he lives with his aunt and her aunt's family. Yeah, it's his aunt's family, so, so it's his cousin. So anyway, it's it's his family. So family. <laughs> Uh, it's just him and his, his cousin, and uh, so he saves <laughs> both of them from getting uh, killed by Dementors or whatever, and uh, no one else is there. They're under, like, an overpass for a bridge, and it's, like, rainy and sad, I guess. I don't know. Is that the feeling that rain gives people in Britain? Sad? Um, <laughs> Unfortunate news so, for them, given the climate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they're... So he does all that. He's like wizzy wazzy and makes a possum appear and kills all of them. And so the Dementors just fly away or whatever. No big deal. Again, I don't even think his living bully sees it because he's passed out from a Dementor <laughs> eating him or something. And uh, and some so old lady comes by and she's like, I don't think you should be doing that. I don't know. That's dangerous. And uh, and he's like, I know you. You live across the street. And so they go back home or whatever. And, and they have to carry this living bully with them because he's that's yeah, still passed all, out he's all and, fucked up from the dementor stuff yeah and so they bring him back in sit him back down and they're like blah, and then of blah, course blah, harry blah. gets blamed for um, it because that's the plot of it that's the opening chapter yeah. of every storyline yeah every story is again these these abusive people are just like i'm gonna beat harry this time finally oh, they're he, so he, he finally, awful he's like <laughs> he finally just, stepped over uh, the line i'm allowed to like break the law and um and so so fucking this letter comes in the mail Oh, from an owl, by the way, because mail doesn't exist in the wizard world. It's just owls. Um, as, I don't have the technology. No, because wizards like to make everybody indentured servants to them. Um, oh. And so uh, these owls come, uh, the well, owl comes owls in and brings a letter. Dumb, so uh, like, no, they're not. Owls are pretty <laughs> smart. The, uh, no, they're not. Don't you dare talk shit about owls. That's the owls hill that Andrew will die on. <laughs> you're yeah. thinking You're He's... thinking falcons and... and uh... Falcons and, are also great. What's wrong with falcons? No, owls uh, are, are are different. They're they. I know they're the symbol of wisdom and all that, but they're they're really like one minded creatures. Owls are the only ones that know how many licks it takes to get the center of Tootsie Pop, and I'll see fucking lions doing <laughs> That's that. That's true I don't see wisdom. Bears. So, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Oh wait, I know the refer- I got the reference. Um. Yeah. And so <laughs> Al brings in this letter. The letter, uh, by the way, is a letter that comes alive um it just like grows lips and an eye and eyes and 
and shouts at Harry very like loudly. By the way, it's not it's not quiet. It's like Harry Potter. Like oh that shit. Like oh, a secu- uh, 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 oh yeah, it's because uh, uh, wizards issue. student wizards aren't allowed to cast spells during summer. Yes, uh, they're only no, ca- no. They're, they're only allowed to cast no, spells no. at 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 home. I mean at school. Uh, they are not. But the letter specifically says that he is expelled for casting magic in the Muggle world. Yeah, uh, in, or, in front of a Muggle. Uh, in front of a Muggle. And so, uh, which this letter, by the way, is magic being casted in front of three Muggles, which is way more than what Harry <laughs> casted in front of. Um, and, and it's not just like out of sight. Like the, the, dad's, the, the dad of that kid is about to beat the shit out of Harry. And he's like walking towards him when this letter happens. <laughs> They have seen a lot of magic, which is why, again, I'm confused about how he's getting suspended for casting magic in front of his family, who may be muggles, but are technically, technically people at this point who have been harassed by magic, like on five well, different movies. The background so, is that like, Voldemort's taking over the government in various ways and has a series of people that work for him. And so it's literally just a flimsy excuse to get Harry Potter out of school because uh his house and the school are both uh, are both protected in different ways uh it's yeah. very because like the whole plot of the end the the ending uh the eighth movie is related to the it's all about the fact that like yeah like they can't they can't penetrate hogwarts and so him being in school makes him safer and so they want to expel him from school because i think it even ha- i think the letter even has the voice of that infuriating woman I can't remember the name I of think today. So, yeah, I think it's so. It's like yeah. it's absolutely uh, just bullshit. It's it's not a plot hole. Uh, it's it's bullshit in universe. No, no, I don't. I didn't think it was a plot hole. I just thought it was really stupid. Like if I at, at that point I would have been like, uh, Your Honor, this letter was casted. It was casted in front of three Muggles. <laughs> like I would have just brought the letter back and be like, You guys Your casted ma- like all of you <laughs> casted magic in front of Muggles. What, what did you guys do? Yeah. That what was wrong with you. You could have just sent a letter. Like, why'd you have to send a magic letter? What's fucking wrong with but you an, people? An infuriatingly <laughs> unreceptive bureaucracy and government is, like, core to the franchise's story. Well, so they like, seem pretty... That, so, like, they any seem pretty, holes, uh, they're like, why won't they just listen? Is like, I'm like, that's that's the point. <laughs> that's well, they did the, seem pretty receptive to Dumbledore just coming in and saying, like, nah And they're like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like half, the, half the council was just like, Oh, I guess Dumbledore's here, so it must be true. He didn't do anything bad. <laughs> like they just believed him on principle. He didn't make a compelling argument. Yeah, but he was that just is the like, level of the problem is that somebody like Dumbledore has to come in and personally vouch for Harry Potter just to get this kind through what is normally like it's like a fucking schoolyard sh- uh, like scuffle. Like it's like a normal delinquent child thing that you, that would not normally re- be like a life ending problem. But not only was it going to ruin his life, but the fucking admin of his entire school had to take time to travel and specifically vouch for him because of the level of bullshit happening. I mm-hmm. I guess it's uh I don't know. It's so weird. I I feel like I so <laughs> if I guess I don't know the context here. Like if Harry got genuinely suspended like they're just like nope that's it we've had a fuck enough get the fuck out um would they like what is the what's the path here what is the path to ex- expulsion do they like erase your memory and send him back into the closet is that what's gonna happen, that happen or the he'd, cupboard he'd be or whatever expelled from the school which would likely mean that he's not allowed to be a wizard basically so it would it would be permanent could he i think it'd be permanently illegal for him to cast spells still- could he still? What, what's going to happen if he casts spells? Will they put him He's in Azkaban? They're going to expel this. Soon. Like, I mean, eventually you'd you'd you end up in Azkaban's prison. Because Azkaban's probably a safer place to be than. I don't not. think he. I don't think he's viewing Azkaban as a valid response to this situation. I I just meant That's that like bad. if as as long as I I'm, I'm also, just thinking the, like as long as the jailbreak he, that happens like that movie or the next one uh clearly would not well, be a safe place for he him. He to. He doesn't have to leave. He can just stay there. No, well, but the, all the people escaping were the Death Eaters. So if if Harry Potter oh, was there, yeah. then they'd be pretty. They'd be fucked. <laughs> they would just kill him. I guess. That's like, true. oh, he's right here. Um, <laughs> all the all the, the only thing guarding him were more of these Dementors that apparently we got past. So is I no guess one he's is dead. like no one is no one else in this world aware of how this works? Like, does no one else know why Harry's there, or is it like just only people at Hogwarts that know Harry? Of why Potter? Harry's at Hogwarts? No, just like Harry's fucking mythos in general. Does everyone know of the whole Harry Potter thing, or is it just like like that where he's the the child who lived and all that? Yeah, it's a it's a yeah. whole obnoxious. It's a whole like narrative that he has to deal with all throughout. With there's there's is that so, 
Uh, like an important part of his character is that everyone around him that he meets has expectations that are put on him that he doesn't even fully understand the context for because most people know more about Harry Potter than he does at the beginning of the story because it, he was so it, all these because like he was so sheltered by his aunt like... and and her shitty family and they literally told him nothing about what happened to his family or why he's here or what things are like this they like lied about what happened to Lily. And kept everything from him, and that's the whole point of the Euro Wizard Harry is that's the f- he didn't know. <laughs> so, so that's also they, why Malfoy really, hates him so much because uh, at they, first you're like, oh, he's just like a piece of shit. That's like, oh, this kid's famous, and I'm gonna take him down a peg and fuck that guy. He's not better than me. But then in the long term, you're like, oh, he's in the Nazi family. His fuck, he's got fucked up parents, and they actually like are like he's getting this like even if he doesn't know the context he's getting like residual hate from the fucked up fascist parents that want to specifically kill harry potter (laughs) because they still work for voldemort so then is like then did like everyone in the ministry get replaced was was like it what did did every because it couldn't have been just that guy and that girl who were evil that guy and that girl. Oh, the Malfoys. So, uh, no, not the Malfoys. Sorry, the uh, the the wizard prime minister. What the fuck is that guy? The the magic guy. Uh, the Cornelius Fudge is the uh, is yeah, like the prime Fudge. minister of Wait. wizards or whatever. Okay, fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, everyone's, everyone's got wacky names because it's a wizard story, Colonel. Yeah, it's. I... Look, I don't, you don't need you. You don't need to remember characters' names. Like you just David, need to remember when, how when bad David they Tennant's are. doing funny tongue flicking motions, you gotta also accept that his name's Barty Crouch Jr. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> the names are fucking hysterical. Yeah, the um, um what's it called? Uh, so so fudge it's a wacky and, children's forget- story about fascism infiltrating your government. Like in and so, which was a funny parallel because at the same time the Star Wars prequels were doing the same story. Yeah, the uh, what's it called? Um, so Fudge and the lady, uh, the the fascist lady who takes over Hogwarts, um, they're the only two evil ones, right? Uh, no. So I don't remember. They were Fudge the only even, ones. I don't think Fudge was even working for Voldemort. What the he was just fuck? kind of a stooge. What do you mean? He was pretty fucking adamant of I, like I getting rid of Harry Potter. I, I feel like what he the just, fuck? I feel like he was somebody that like it was just massively politically inconvenient to deal with the reality of what was coming up, so they ignore it like, you know, real governments do. But uh, there's also surrounded okay. by people who, yeah, absolutely were working for Voldemort in a number of cases, but they don't like it's because it's the from the perspective of a guy that's going to school, you don't get like a detailed breakdown of the entire wizard hierarchy and the Silmarillion or whatever that tells you the political alignment of every <laughs> single character. Like, I, so, well, you, so I was more, you, you, when you see a handful of people like... that have infiltrated the government, the implication is that a bunch of other people you don't know about are also there. And yeah, like you see those like death eater meetings and there's like a bunch of people there and you know, three of their faces, but there's more and you're like, Ooh, where's that guy from? What's that guy up to? Is he I the guess I, I just was wondering of England. <laughs> I was because like at the end of it, it's all like ah, Fudge is getting fucking kicked out because he, I'm, he never. I guess he. Yeah, I think whatever. he resigns uh, after everyone sees Voldemort because he just spent the last year calling Harry a liar over the Voldemort sighting. Yeah, and then he's like, "Well, my my career's over." Yeah, but so like so no one else gets kicked out. Like not all. I like I would be fucking gunning hard for everybody that was in that room that voted to kick Harry out of fucking school. Like all of them were clearly, all of them were clearly lying. Oh no! Like they're I mean, all working for Voldemort. Brexit. Like <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. I just say like world. there's like there's all, there's all sorts of history of like the lying people. Have consequences. Half the people that mean? actually are responsible for the worst it's, choices don't even face the consequences. It, it's often like a guy they choose to highlight it at. They, if well, they quit, there's always, there's yeah, always, there's always showy it. political machinations. It's like when in Blizzard had the big fucking Cosby Room nightmare news, and then they're like, "Well, here's a female SEO and or CEO, CEO that's going to co CEO," and it's like, "Oh, turns out uh, she felt actively talked over and used as a, as a pawn, and also was being paid less than the male CEO." It's like it's it's always political moves that are bullshit. Like it's there's no good thought, before and after where the government's good in Harry Potter. Okay, I didn't know if like that that was part of his cabinet or if that was like 
Because I don't really know what... The, the like, Wizard the, Tribunal like, it would not be like a cabinet or are those like, the leadership. Are those like the judges? judges? Or like, what is what is the... So there's, there's some so, kind of wait, so, I, mean, I don't know the, I don't know the specific so, details honestly because like that's a that's a lot yeah, of people show for like a kid person that I got once upon a time she was like the most hated character for me in all of fiction and I can't remember her name today but she was like there I remember you can't miss her she's wearing bright pink no matter what the context and yeah. in that scene it was like this fucking like pitch black obsidian tiled room and she's still in fucking bright pink and you're like I think oh I, there I, she is. <laughs> I think it was really cowardly though that they didn't kill her. Like they should have killed her, right? Like the Who centaurs her? took her away. Like she should have been fucking murdered. I don't know why they didn't. Oh yeah, it definitely seemed like she might have been dead for a while. Yeah, I was. I was really like, oh cool. I'm glad they at least killed her. And then it was like, no, she resigns. Like she's fucking alive. Come on, man. Like chuck her off a cliff. What the fuck is this shit? Yeah, no, like, they they. She it literally just tried they, to like undermine like the entire world. Her. Like they, as far weird. as I'm aware, like the centaurs would have killed her, so she just actually got away or something. I think. No, because there's I think no they way shoot she arrows at away. people, don't they? Like, I think they're like. They, fuck that's what you, I was saying. That's what I was woods. making a joke about. Like the the guy, yeah, the the guy was just like a shot with an arrow, and he's like, huh, huh, and he just snaps the arrow yeah. off, and he just like looks at that's it because like, he's just they, not just, phased. They were literally trying to murder her. They were stabbing at her with spears when he was yeah. holding her up. They were like trying to stab at her like there's no fucking way she lived that's like such a cop out you should have killed her there's no reason to not kill that character like i wanted like i wanted a, a scene where it's like to, found the body blood. of like pink lady in the woods i like, mean I, I everybody know. wants to hear that at the end of that movie because she's she's pink lady why can't i remember her name you know you know what i think i think the they should make an eighth movie where harry potter goes and kills all the people who besmirched him over the the seven movies and like call call it harry potter and the wizard relieve revenge <laughs> and just have him like i don't know fly a dragon or something and like burn everybody who got <laughs> like harry to potter and the, you had your chance to listen <laughs> <laughs> you picked then, a side and you will stay on it <laughs> like there does seem to be a, 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 th a thematic insistence on on the, the the driving motivations of being wrongfully accused of something by your superiors it's uh, sure. it's more it, it's more infuriating when it's like insistence through ignorance like uh someone is adamant and confident that you are wrong even though they have no proof like at no point did anyone have proof to counter harry like harry has all the proof he has memories and he can use those memories yeah. uh but like at no yeah, point did I mean someone like, show up and say like i have a way to prove you're a liar and so it's just like somebody who has it's actually really frustrating just, no, that just because adds, specifically that, yeah. Like it plays directly into the narrative of what J.K. Rowling is doing herself now, because now she is yeah. the villains of Harry Potter and she's actively ignoring the people that are telling her to her face what the real what reality is and what things mean. And How do you think like, she was so good at writing them, Keith? I'm 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 fucking <laughs> Cornelius Fudge and I'm going to make the world worse and use my power badly and actively ignore information right in front of me and so on. Like it's like it's 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 if anything, it's like very accurate fiction i guess because with, like once she f finished her transformation into a, a, a proper boomer she became the villains of her own stories <laughs> but but what i mean is like the the because it's it sort of as a reader i i imagine you sort of feel or share the dread of of uh the consequences of something that is unfair for harry either because you're expelled or because something even worse is going to happen but the problem is that, that you know the comp the fact that those like accusations are so easily dismantled by figures of power, coupled with the fact that they're uh, accusations without any proof, as you're saying, Andrew. The I think that that just like that that has a I don't know if that's just on one book and so it's like oh this happens a lot. Um, I, I get the impression that this keeps happening. I mean the, the entire franchise talking. is pretty much Harry and his friends knowing more than the wizarding world at at large does about the bad thing happening, and but they're largely being ignored. It's because yeah, it's, the, it's mostly just like Harry Potter trying his best to not get his friends killed because no one else wants to be a fucking among, responsible among adult other things, in the wizard it's world. The, you got to have a narrative that justifies how a series of kids keep being the ones that are involved in the climax of the story every time. Yeah, yeah, fair. 
So it's like, certain, you know, yeah. young adult children's story and so on. And, and, and whether intended yeah. or not, it ends up telling a story about like this bureaucratic nightmare of people that and care more about what's politically expedient well. than actually like happening and doom the world in the process and global warming metaphors and so on. Because there's a fundamental there's a fundamental aspect of it that doesn't seem to be mentioned when it comes to being wrongfully accused of something. And when you're writing a story about that. You need to analyze the power structures behind that accusation and the consequences of those accusations. And if that that stuff goes un, un, unanalyzed, then it's hopeless. It's like it's 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 really really it's a despair thing. Like you you're being wrongfully accused by people who have more power than you and who will punish you, and you have no hope by yourself of doing things. And if you don't analyze the power structure in a story about that, you're you're living it half told. And it's, it, I mean, obviously it's, this is like centuries old wizard school. So there's a lot of, very, uh, yeah, and also it's Britain. So there's a very, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, an, unanalyzed power structures there to go through. So is there, I mean, you don't know what this happens in the story. I don't, but it sounds like it. might like be a it. bit of a leap. So I, I it, haven't, yeah. I, I ha I'm obviously not done with it yet. Uh, and I don't mind the spoiler, but like. Is, is that, that where the how, story goes? It, in, spoiler is, is alert how, for Harry Potter two and a half hours in. Is, just is in that case how, you is that missed how, the hints. <laughs> is that how Voldemort always looked? Has he always looked like that? Uh, no, I think the Horcruxes did that to him. Okay, so that's like... You know what a Horcrux he, is okay. yet? Uh, he, splint, he's, he, he, he splintered his soul into seven pieces, yeah. and that's why he can't die. Yeah, I get that. And so yeah. the, those parts of his soul are in objects, which turned out, the, the diary turned out to be one of them retroactively, which was definitely retconning, but whatever. Just like how the, one of the Deathly Hollows turns out to be the invisibility cloak that he's had the whole time. Uh, there's definitely some retcons going on. Uh, and every time you fracture your soul, you have to kill somebody to do it. So it's like, it's, it's like a there's like resonant story, go, storytelling going on there. But over, I think over the course of that, he became less and less human looking. Okay. And that's, I, I thought went, it he was went like... deeper and deeper down the snake motif. No, because you, know, you know what he looked like. Because he... he's Tom Riddle. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, second book that, that the evil spirit attacking him is the part of his soul that's in the Horcrux ever since he was in, in Hogwarts. So it's you, you see young Voldemort because that's the villain of the second book. Oh, okay. Is the Horcrux. Because when like he turn into a witch's brew i guess he kind of just merged. when he was a little i guess he's a little gremlin a little gremlin boy yeah when he was like the little gremlin and then he like got thrown in the pot and the pot just kind of like m turned into him um the uh he came out and he was like touching himself and he's like happy he's like ah and i'm like are is this normal like it yeah. looks like it failed yeah, it looks he, like it i think fucked he was up like royally. that before he turned into oh, a gremlin okay. boy which but he is, wasn't but he I'm wasn't so like sorry. that originally like, god be... poor guy dude he has no hair no nose he has like <clears throat> barely a chin his chin's kind of like very weak mm -hmm. and like i just feel so bad for him he just he i i'm sure there are wizard i there is wizard plastic surgery because they have that with that funny juice and polymorph juice you can just drink some of that and go look pretty or something but like uh, polymorph juice only lasts an hour I'm, you know if what? You're lucky, you're, do if you're lucky, you're like Tonks who can uh, change their appearance at will. Okay, well there you go. Learn that magic. I'm sure he can uh, take some time and learn it. I think you and... have to be born that. Oh, I'm sure there's some old magic thing. spell that you, you can to just use be that sure... from birth. I bet you there's a spell that you can take people's magic abilities when you kill them or something. It's, it's a wizard. <laughs> like what like is this? Heroes? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just yeah, like yeah. You could just basically. Reference. You could basically just like, I don't know, it's probably some ancient wizard spell where it's like, if you kill a person who has a special ability like a werewolf or changing your face, you can just take that from them or whatever, but they have to die. And you're like, oh no, what a sacrifice to make. Thanks for being a werewolf. Like, <laughs> like you know, like, I don't know. Like, it, I don't, it, either way. The point I'm, I'm, making a, is I'm really sad so there's a dark tinge to this entire universe now because of its creator being a piece of shit because I just genuinely am having fun talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> it's, it's so it's so crazy. I just genuinely, like just... I just genuinely enjoy like the universe and all of its stupid, weird quirks and its fun little stories. And it's it had I, a handful of things that were a bummer, but then it became a this, super I, bummer recently. I'm trying to be nice and like I, I did see, I did. Uh, obviously, I did. I did see like one through five, and I saw, I, I saw six as well. 
So I'm just like one movie away from finishing this. Two, because um, they split the last book into two movies. I'm one movie away from finishing this. Oh. Uh, just you because ha- you split it into two doesn't mean you get to make it two movies. It's just a two. It's just one movie cut in half. Yeah, so kind of. It's still, uh, it, it kind of. It's, yeah, so, I mean, it's since yeah. it's one arc from one book, technically, if you do the Kill Cause it, Bill because it's part one, it's part one, part two, which means it's still one. It's still one whole movie just cut into two, just like sure. Avengers is or whatever. Um, Distinctly, that's the those way seven's my favorite, so I, I latch onto that uh, a little bit because eight's just kind of like so, a giant cathartic action sequence for an entire movie. But uh, but in the same movie, I, I like uh, I like road I, trips. I, I thought it was really funny that they uh I th- I really thought it was funny that the plan was to like get Harry to take the 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 pro- prophecy and just give it to them. I guess they assumed he would bring his friends or whatever, but like it is really like leaning heavily on the hope that he brought his friends. But like if he had come alone and just had that prophecy and they're like, "All right, Harry, give that to me. I'll tell you all about why you're ugly." And he'd be like, <laughs> "No." And just drop it on the ground and they like they, what's he gonna do he's gonna be like well that plan didn't go very well <laughs> like, like i don't know like I, I i i'm wondering like at what point did someone sit down talk about the plan and like did voldemort know about this plan because i feel like he would have been like i don't think this is a good idea don't let harry touch the prophecy because it's mm-hmm. gonna go real bad <laughs> like if harry that boy touch touches it he's yeah he's don't let him be. He will throw it on the ground. He does everything on the ground. Don't do that. Everything that's broken he does everything him. on the ground. What? Right? Everything. I'm not does. a part like, of your system. <laughs> <laughs> Harry literally like did his best to hold onto that thing, only to be like, no. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is like, man, what the? Like, I don't know. I mean, also, you know, Malfoy's dad is like a fucking clown. The dude like just fails every <laughs> his, single. His eyebrows like, don't match his hair. Every single step it, it, he it's takes got the is like a effect that bothers me. I'm like, I don't, I don't think that's how hair looks. I think your eyebrows are supposed to match yeah. your hair, from what I've seen. No, yeah, some, everything some he, people, some people have uh, darker roots, and then the he has such like dark the, eyebrows, from what I remember, just like Daenerys Targaryen oh, yeah. did, who would, because it's because that actress has brown hair. She's not blonde, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, such yeah, a little but, uh, shit. He's such an evil little shit. The end of the second movie, he's just gonna stab a child. He's like, "Fuck it, I give up. I'm gonna stab this child." <laughs> and if, if Dobby didn't come in, he would have just stabbed a kid. <laughs> that's apparently what he was planning. I mean, it's that's a plan. Uh, that's certainly it, a plan you can have. <laughs> it is very impressive uh, that, that that wasn't the first option. Like he knows where he sleeps. It's not like Harry's <laughs> hiding. Uh, he goes to the same school every day and sleeps in the same building every day. So I'm, I'm assuming the same bed every day. Mm-hmm. You could just, I don't know, you go get, get that. There's one invisibility cloak. I'm sure there's a potion of invisibility. Just invisible yourself up, sneak on in, in there and yoink and just stab him right in the heart. Be done. And that's, that's a little it. bit but like again, the fly that the, eagles into The whole point situation. is this guy is like a complete utter klutz. Like this dude cannot, I don't even know how he like graduated from magic school but he somehow did uh but malfoys are just like embarrassingly pathetic at everything that they do and um and it's have just, you ever, it's just really have fun you ever watched uh, a series of unfortunate events i think i have that's the one with the oh Elijah no no Wood. no that's Sorry, I was thinking of something else. No, I have not seen that. Because <laughs> given the given the context here, I'm just like I'm I'm curious how your tolerance would be for watching an entire franchise about one Neil Patrick Harris just kind of like systematically wiping out like a dozen people that seem just bizarrely incapable of of just fighting back or something. Like he's just slowly murdering them all one by one. He's like, how does he always get away with it? Because it's like, like I'll never process that this is like a, a children's story and that's like kind of the mood of it or whatever. Because <laughs> like. It's just a. And fuck, I, it's like that's a. It's like a tolerance thing where it's like that's kind of like, just b- baked into the like, the premise. Like, why doesn't the story end with someone just stabbing this child to death in in their bed? <laughs> why doesn't it? Re- why does it have to revolve around like a magic like, like a prophecy stone where they try to steal his soul or something? Like, no, nah, just stab the child. Use a gun. Go for it. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's like, well, it's it would be point. kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really funny if like Harry brought a gun to the wizard world and next yeah. time Voldemort showed up, he's like, I'm gonna get you, Harry. He's like, fuck that. Clack, 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 clack. 
He's like, well, I've been dead for 300 years. What is that you have in your hand? Like, <laughs> it's a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> and like I, like I said, I get it. I went into the premise of you know, I went in watching have these. to drop someone? <laughs> <laughs> I went into I went into these movies knowing that they're children's movies, so I'm not expecting like, you know, yeah. stellar uh, understand like stellar uh, outcomes here. I, I get that like it's gonna have to be the most like grown heavy uh, extendor. Like, oh yeah, of course that's how that ended. Um, or like you know like I, I I again I'm gonna assume the movies are just doing a bad job of it, but I think that the dialogue between Harry and his friends are not good are very bad dialogue uh a lot of it is genuinely the majority of the movie is harry quietly sitting there saying fuck all and someone else saying something and then going harry you fucking asshole and harry's like what (laughs) (laughs) it's literally like any time like there there was a time he was sitting there in the library is like uh ron and hermione are arguing to each other and and harry's just sitting there he's just not saying a single word reading a book, quietly sitting there, and S- Snape just comes over and beats the shit out of Harry, and I was like, what did fucking Harry do? Well, that's like, he's turn. just sitting uh, there. He, he's still James's son, which is unforgivable. I know, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> but this happens, like, in multiple instances. Like, he just... He's just, like, he's just sitting there, and it's it, usually it's Ron. Ron just gets, like, too fucking uppity, and it's a Harry just oh, yeah, gets they made dragged Ron down pretty with him. angsty in the movies in a way that wasn't entirely Ron, accurate. I'm gonna go. I don't want to be rude, but Ron's an incel, and there's I will a, not a, change there's my also mind like about a, that. There's a like, there's a video by Quinn Curio, I think, that discusses like the differences between book and movie Ron because like specifically, there's like scenes where Ron is supposed to explain things. Uh, but they took almost every scene where he's ever the person that knows something and replaced it with Hermon- Hermione knowing it instead, but kept all the parts where Ron is inept or a mess and then added more parts. So he's like way more of an idiot and also like aggressive and so on in the movies. And he's kind of like more frustrating across the board in a way that wasn't yeah, the he's books. Yeah, like, he's, he's like <clears throat> a weird piece of shit. And like one of the biggest it's... mistakes in the movies that's like actively like this doesn't make sense necessarily is uh, Hermione explains what a mudblood is. And it's like, but you're not from the wizarding world. Like the premise of that scene in the book was that uh, like a, what sounds like a racial slur or something gets used against Hermione from Malfoy. And she doesn't know what it means, but she knows it's, that something's wrong, basically. And uh, and so like literally between slugs that he's hurling up Malfoy uh uh Ron is explaining what this thing is like in that scene but instead he's just like comedy relief puking slugs while Hermione explains racism to us because she just knows everything in every scene no matter what I feel bad for her that her that poor character is just like she has to know everything in every scene dude she's like she is literally the like the pillar for that like entire uh friend group i guess like it the only thing the only reason that the that they ever succeeded anything yeah yeah like i harry only like harry i guess technically harry does do stuff but i think most of his success is by luck like and um he's not really like capable until like the the story needs him to be because the majority of the time he's like really a a doofus um and and ron is just like again in the movies i don't know the i i I do not I have never read the book and never will. The um Ron is just like criminally bad at everything <laughs> he does. Just like he can literally set fire to anything just by touching it with no fire around. Like I don't know how he does it. Like he talks to a person, it goes bad. He looks at a person, it goes bad. He reads a book, it goes bad. I don't know what he does, but he's got some kind of curse on him. And then Hermione's just over here like I'm going to do everything. I'm good at magic. I know I know everything about every aspect of the entire world. I have people skills so I can communicate with other people and not have them hate me. I'm also like, uh, what is it? Um, I, I also apparently don't have any racism in me. So I, I I'm well, that's not true. She has like the weird she's. She still seems uh, or no, I guess that's not true. She did also want to go and free the 
She did want to go and free the goblin That's one slaves. of the weird... Uh, um, I, I, I was trying to think yeah, of like, what some that. of the she, really weird elements she, of the story are, and one of them is the yeah, fact that she like wants yeah. to free the, the elves from their slavery, and the narrative in the unit... Everyone's like, that's weird. You're annoying and wrong, Hermione. And the, actually, the elves love working. And it's like, this is a really weird fucking thing to put in your story, JK. What the wow. fuck? It was, it was also it's, weird that they, so did, that they agreed with her. Like, the elves did want to stay... Yeah, no, it's, it's it's big. Like, what sh we we should process how all these Pokemon like violence are getting in violence so much. No, they love it. And, like that black and blue story where you're like, ah, this. Yeah, <laughs> explaining yeah, it made it worse. <laughs> Anyways, she is like she is basically what we, we got uh, a wrap. Would, though, I'm sorry. She, yeah, sorry. Basically, uh, I feel uh, <laughs> it, I feel bad because uh, out of the three, Hermione is what should have been the main character, and oh, everyone yeah, that's, that's else usually. can just kind of like. But uh, but it's funny. It's it's very funny to me that like I watching them interact with each other. It's really like a lot of it is between Harry and Ron because obviously they live in the same place and they kind of just hang out all the time. And like their interactions are really boring. Like there's not anything good going on there. And Harry's really like short and uh, I don't know, like just snippety about everything like he just doesn't have time to really talk about anything even though he like clearly needs to just tell somebody what's going on yeah um and uh so i'm it, it's it well i made the mistake of what, telling what, effie that we'd probably be ready in half an hour from now <laughs> so sorry i thought we were gonna so, wrap this uh, up like an hour ago i'm like oh fuck Anyways, there's no, that's there's it. no so, breaks uh, there's no breaks that i can uh, like like end it in so maybe n next time one just day tell the we'll, ending uh, of of the harry potter story Harry Potter wins. Because, Whoa. Well, yeah, Harry Potter wins. Wait, he is, wins every time. Is he, is he not done? Yeah. yeah, it's over. What? He yeah, hasn't seen the last one. I haven't seen the last one. Oh, right. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen the last one, but I. Yeah, he always wins. Like, yeah, everything. He wins everything he does. He, like, any anytime you, he shows him in a competition, there is Harry's a surprising win. body count, but Harry Potter wins. <laughs> Well, that's there, that's pretty normal for like even shonen anime is like, wow, the main character did it with a fucking yeah, line of corpses like, behind them. Oh, like a <laughs> like, lot of my favorite, favorite characters died, including some of them off camera. <laughs> like literally, like you're you're like surveying the the carnage and the aftermath. And it's like, <laughs> oh fuck, my favorite character's dead. <laughs> I kind of I I know it's not true, but I really hope that like the seventh movie part two has like a, a who we lost. <laughs> and it just shows like a picture of all the wizard casts and it just like, like X's gallery. over them. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's the just, graduation just... year of the school. Yeah. It just shows, it just shows like, all the ones that died. The arms of an yeah. angel. <laughs> I want I want him on his stupid little owl podium. Uh Dumbledore <laughs> up the oh, wait, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just remember that's that. what you can call the podcast. All right, we gotta go and just gotta walk his dog all and right. eat or something and probably be late for the badly we it's it's a struggle <laughs> I, th I thought we'd be make it i seven. thought we'd be ready at six no, but make wanna, it seven every time but that cut that make that reduces seven. how much we can get done i'm trying so hard to finish these podcasts in time that we can start at six like we planned so we don't no. take three years to beat the next expansion of final fantasy 14 it significantly cuts down talked. how long the session is if we're late Maybe if those cutscenes weren't fucking 40 hours long. <laughs> they are the game. There's like 30 seconds of gameplay for four hour, per four hour stream. <laughs> and it's not even it's not even fucking gameplay we can do together half the time. Yeah, it's gameplay no, we have to no. do right, We gotta go. Everyone, good night. Goodbye. Was not expecting bye bye. today's podcast to be a lukewarm defense of Harry Potter, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs>